a truck. Hurry up! I swear my allegiance to the supreme ruler, our Fuhrer. Say it. You've already sacrificed too many prisoners. <laughs> Yes, yes, y'all, it's going down right now. Episode 215 of the 22 Shots of Moods and Horror podcast is coming at you live and direct. And we got the homies Double Shot J and the Jew, also known as JP and Jeremy the Jew in the house. And I am your host, the M O D to the Z, representing PGBC. And you can never feel me. Moods. Jew. What's going Wait, on, what guys? happened? I thought you weren't doing the yes, yes, yo, yo. Apparently, he doesn't listen to the show anymore. St- no, I don't listen to the show anymore. Of course, I don't listen. You never anymore. did in the first place. You know what? I, I know. Just, you know, when you have like a six month break, I'm just like, fuck it. But it's not a long intro. It's very, very downplayed and simplified. It's easy to do. I like don't come it. Up yeah, with the, he, he, the homies. he's still a freaking idiot because he's he still doesn't know what it is. <laughs> he said, yes, yes, yo, yo. <laughs> <laughs> right right of course it's always yes yes yo yo yes yes yo yo um yeah man jeremy back uh first show in a long time it has been what six seven months since last time you longer than that i think it's, it's been a while man i mean we had a longer uh, break this no, year he was on 2005 well yeah months yeah months yeah yeah May. yeah because we had an extra month break there and stuff and yeah no it's been a while but uh, i miss you fuckers what have you been up to Everyone's getting their wish. They're like, where's the original three? Well, it just happens, so it's going to be this week. And probably... Yeah, you're actually here. missed, which is weird. You know what, JP? Go fuck yourself, all right? I feel like there is. he'll be missed, and then he's back for this show, and then everybody will complain, like, why the fuck is Jeremy on? Where's Dave? Yeah, where's, where's Mr. Dave? Barker? <laughs> get, yeah. get, the, get the new three back. Yeah, you well, can't, you I can't, feel that you can't Dave is trying to make me the new Jeremy, and he's trying to be the new me. <laughs> because he's making fun of the way that I'm saying things and talking. Right. And then he's also trying to make me look like a racist by saying, why did I bring up the fact that that guy was Indian? <laughs> so I feel like he's doing to me what I do to Jeremy. So, right. um, yeah, that he's he's medicine. trying to make me. He's forcibly trying to make me the new you, and I ain't having it. I I didn't notice it at first, but I realized it when I was listening back to the show the other day. And I'm like, he's trying to make me Jeremy. I'm not. Uh, so now that I know, that ain't happening. <laughs> I did notice that thing with the with the speak. That's why I called you speak in that one intro there, <laughs> because he was mentioning that you can't fucking talk. <laughs> I was like, he is. You might be the new Jeremy, man. This is ridiculous. Ain't happening. But yeah. you can only have one person on the show who can't talk so guess jp you're back to me yeah if you have multiple people that can't talk man it's not really much of a podcast now is it yeah i know so good thing dave isn't here it'd be a disaster (laughs) right 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 but yeah man so week two of italian horror month uh and this is your pick yeah this is my pick sergio garoni um, so if you guys haven't checked out week one, which is Antonio Margaretti, do so because not too many people checked it out. <laughs> Let's face it. Come on, guys. Everybody is yeah. always excited. It seems like everyone's most excited for Italian Horror Month, but then it comes and then nobody listens. <laughs> so, That's, see, we should have led with Bava we, if we didn't have to move it around. Yeah. Because I feel like whenever, because like. I Argento like, always did well. Argento always was a good opener because you had, you know, a, a recognizable name. name. He's a household name. I don't even know if Mario Bava is even that popular among people. To Not be as much as Fauci and Argento. Exactly. Those are the two that are like the the names of Italian horror. Even though he should be because Bava makes fantastic films. But I do know what you're saying, though. Having Bava leading off is kind of like, you know, just kind of setting the stage. And then you bring in the lower guns after like Sergio Garoni and shit. Right. So yeah, way lower guns. But uh <laughs> Amen. I thought the point was you start off with somebody popular. What happened? But well, Antonio we Margaretti is to me. Bava. Well, he's yeah, he's popular to us. But uh, we we're going to start off with Bava. But we have a guest lined up for Bava that couldn't do it week one, so yeah. we moved it. What a loser! Yeah, that's what happened there. So that's why we started out with JP's pick, and 
I guess it is what it is, man. It is what it is. But yeah. Uh, but yeah, definitely check out that show if you guys would, because I thought it was actually a really good show. And in yeah. fact, we talked about the third and the the Cannibal Apocalypse film, and I thought we went really well into it with like the themes of PTSD and war and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So I, I think it's a definitely a val- valuable conversation to listen to. Um, so definitely check that out, listeners. That is right. That's right. Um, yeah. So again, Sergio Garoni this week. And then of course, like we just mentioned, we have Bava coming up next week and then week four, which we just changed. Yep. And that is going to be, who is week four? Claudio Fergasso. Yes. Claudio Fergasso. That's amazing. That's going to be a fun <laughs> week. That's going to be a fun week because let's face yeah. it, man, Fergasso makes, and he's always involved with so much fun films, whether it be a Bruno Mattai film or his own or whatever. So, yeah, it's going to be yeah. interesting conversations because one of the picks that actually is your pick with the Night Killer that that movie's bizarro. It's just I know bizarro. I just watched it. <laughs> yeah, it's a really fucking <laughs> you <weird> lazy movie. <laughs> bastard. <laughs> No, you're not well, gonna watch no, it again. well, it's actually hard because so many of his films, like he he, he was like a uh, you know came in halfway and directed the rest of it and right. stuff like that. So it was like a, a little harder to pick like films that he directed, and he that one even he was replaced on, or he replaced. So I forget how the, it goes. I think he, I think he was replaced. By, yeah, uh, there is definitely Bruno two directors. I'm, I'm not 100% sure on how, which is, you know, I, I don't know if he's fully replaced because him and Bruno Mattai work side by side on so many things that maybe he just. Well, what it was, was um, he was going for more of a like psychological surreal thing because I did check out some features. Okay. And Bruno Mattai, they, the studio wanted more like gore and like slasher elements. So they that whole opening with the the. De- the um stage play the the killer stabs the chick through the stomach or whatever mm-hmm, that mm-hmm. was all uh shot after the movie had wrapped by right. bruno matai so right. it was uh like added and there was other things that were added in that one hmm. yeah i guess that uh it kind of makes sense i mean that's what they were going for in those days so yeah right right um <laughs> that should be a fun show though <laughs> yeah all three films are they're definitely it's fun it's gonna be one of the funner weeks that's for sure anyways but yeah um but jeremy man what you've been up to i haven't talked to you forever what's new i know i feel like we haven't talked to well i'm now a production coordinator instead of a production assistant so i moved up the ladder in the world of production i suppose you could say so when you break finally good mate i've been doing five fucking years of being a production assistant and being taken advantage of and all that not not sexually yeah, everybody. Not sexu- <laughs> it's funny that he has to note that it's not sexually because you know he's a blackhawks fan right so yeah Ooh. but um Ooh. so so Too being a coordinator so being a coordinator um so you actually get to tell other people what to do is that yeah, how it I works to, i get to hire the pas now and then i get to i make like the call sheets and i do the purchase orders which is whenever we buy something with you know, we pay with a check or we pay with the card that the company has. We have to make a purchase order that lines up to whatever it is in the budget. So let's say, I don't know, uh, production trucking, there's a budget and that, that has a line on the budget. So it would be like production trucking and it goes to line 176. So you have to fill out a purchase order. It's like coding. Kind of. It's easier. It's easier it? if you look at a budget to understand what I'm talking about. You know me; I'm not yeah. the most uh, right. intelligent person. But I've been doing that, and then you know, just just housekeeping stuff, travel, getting people here from wherever they are, and hotels and food and all the other stuff that goes into putting things together. So, so now the real question is: since you have a lot more responsibilities, it sounds like where you got to kind of crunch things down, and it, it just you know when you're telling people what to do, does the pay reflect? The responsibility. Two and a half times of what I was getting oh, paid. Oh, two before. and a half times. Well, then it does. <laughs> yes. Yeah, Appar- if a big difference. Okay. So. Haven't you told with the amount of movies I've been buying? I haven't been doing that before. Now I've been buying movies. Yeah. yeah. Haven't yeah, you noticed? Is, yeah, you're 4K crazy, like man. A couple hundred on Arrow. So. Could you yeah. imagine but, if there was still family videos around there? You'd probably just start buying up the actual video store. I right? miss family <laughs> Oh, bro. Yeah. With you, the, you just hit a soft spot. The expendable cash that you have right now, man. You just, ah, give me the store. I don't need I drove one. I drove by one today and the sign's still up and it made my heart 
cry. God so are, damn fucking COVID. So are they actually all gone now? There's no more? Yeah. yeah. No more. Hmm. The last video store bit the dust. It's no, actually, I still have one. It really is crazy chain. when you think about it because, like, even when I was there, like, there was a family ve- a family video on, like, every corner, it seemed like. Yeah, we, yeah, they but, seem to do really well in the Illinois area because they we had a couple, but they they weren't that popular here. Well, they do good yeah. in rural. I'm surprised they don't do good in your area, Jay, because they do good in rural areas. They don't have good internet. So. I mean, I guess the fact that we had like three of them would probably suggest that they did well. Yeah, but. they must have did decent. Yeah. Hmm. What have you been up to? I have Us? been the same old man. The absolute same old. I spent pretty much all summer not at my house. <laughs> so short and long of that. And then just back to reality now. Same shit. To and from, man. Yet? Busy. Busy. It getting cold yet? It just started. It actually kind of snowed yesterday. It's not really going to stay or nothing, but it actually kind of got a little bit cold. Which sucks. I guess it is like into November, so yeah, it's about that time. But yeah, uh, mm-hmm. I mean... We have such mild winters now. I'm not really expecting anything to get too, too crazy. So, you know what? Speaking of cold, um, did you guys, I don't know if Jeremy was a fan of moods, but I know you were, did you watch the new Dexter? No, I didn't actually. I, did, I forgot that it was premiering and yeah, it came out like two yesterday. I yeah. Think. I think it was last night and I totally forgot Wasn't about it, it, but dude, check it watch? out, man. It's pretty interesting. Man, I, 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 I actually really liked it. Yeah. I, I'm it's, just, uh, I'm, I'm kind of taken back by this, man, that there's a new season of Dexter and there's a new season of Curb Your Enthusiasm also. Yeah, but have you have you watched Chucky Moods? I have them PVR'd right now or whatever you guys oh, call them. you got to watch it, I, dude. It's I, fucking good. I know. I've been I've hearing from everybody. It's worth checking so. out. It's fucking, it's fucking great. Yeah, so I'm still not 100% sure on what they did with the TV. Is it actually related to the movies or is it just yes. kind of a... Yeah. yeah. It, it's right after Cole. It is right after called. Okay, that's good. But you wouldn't be able to tell that by the first episode. No, at least this week is I, when it, this week is when it starts picking up from that okay. main storyline, really. Because I remember but, us yeah. talking about what they were going to do with the TV series, possibly and stuff, and I wasn't sure if they actually went through that and kept it kind of related. To it's great. The it surprised cult. me. It's it's fucking bloody. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the, the first episode, Chucky, man. Same old Chucky's. He has a potty mouth, which is awesome. You don't expect that on TV, but he has a potty mouth, so it feels yeah. just like a movie. It's 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 fucking great. Who does the I voice for that Chucky? They in can it? cuss. Brad Dorf. Brad Dorf. Yeah, is he it's doing everybody? Jennifer Tilly's in it. It's like the whole yeah, crew. All the, all the OG characters. Holy yeah. man! Yeah, yeah. I I actually was really surprised uh, with the first. I've only watched the first episode. I'm be, I am behind. But um, I was first, I learned that you can say the f word on TV. I didn't know that. Um, I did hear they bleeped the cunt, cunt the other night. What's but, the yeah. What's the network it's premiering on though? Sci-fi. sci-fi. I don't know if it's the same up in Canada. Yeah. If you have sci-fi, yeah, it's like a variation. I think it's sci-fi or something like that. But I, I yeah, it's. But our censorship up here is whatever. They probably didn't even beep out cunt. <laughs> <laughs> but, but no, uh, it's it's actually really good. And Dexter uh, is set in the in like a cold area. It's New York, I actually believe. Um, during Christmas, um, this first season here, hmm. I think it. I don't know. If, I think this might be the only season. I don't know if they're wrapping it up with this. I think it's but, like a mini series, a mini thing, like they did with yeah. Breaking Bad. Like, so instead of doing series. an yeah. hour and a half movie, they're going to make like a 10 hour series and or whatever they're going to do. Yeah. And, yeah. That's interesting. But there was only two things that I didn't like. There's a character that shows up that I felt like, okay, how would this character know where he was that I didn't like? And, but that could be explained away later, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, and then there is a, um, the, the way that they make Dexter, sort of the anti-hero right like like you you're you're on his side which so sometimes they have to do this thing where they have to make the people that he kills really unlikable or else you well killing likable people is just hard to digest right and and i i feel like they went overboard a little bit with one thing where i'm like okay like we already know the dude's bad but like there was a moment of like um i guess what you thought was sincerity and then it goes and then they just pulled out from under you so i don't know it was like i'm mm. not cra- I, but i'm j- i guess i'm just evil because so i would <laughs> where is it taking place because it ended in like it ended in oregon or something like that didn't it 
Isn't that where I think it took he, I want to say he's in New York, um, but it's like um, so he's not like back in very, Florida. Okay, it's very like rural area in New York. Right. Um, so probably upper New York. He, yeah. 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 Uh, and he's like in, in a new relationship, and he is he actually works at like a bait and tackle type like you know hunting store Mm -hmm. and he lives in like a little cabin out by the lake um and that's basically it's like a very very small town but i thought the most interesting aspect of it is the contrast from miami because you know with like dexter like that at that miami atmosphere throughout the whole show Mm -hmm. like a really strong like sort of like how breaking bad had like uh the new mexico atmosphere this is um like that dexter had miami now this that they literally have taken the atmosphere and like done something totally different with it with this winter setting and i like love it it's really cool um but yeah it's really it, i was really happy with the first episode so hmm. we'll see that's good man that's good so what's the word on it are they just bringing it back for a season to kind of like yeah, I think and it's like work a things thing. out, kind of set yeah. the set the shit straight, you know, give but people kind of knowing what they wanted. them, dude. Yeah. That's how it was like marketed. But knowing them, they'll probably leave it open because I think it's going to be a success. And right. I, I believe think so it might too. be that's what I was exclusive thinking. to the Showtime app. Yeah, or the Showtime, whatever the hell it's called, Showtime Plus or whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, so knowing them, they're probably going to want to drive content for the sh- their streaming service. So I wouldn't be surprised if they brought it back. And it seems like most of these streaming services are dipping into vaults to bring back stuff that people like, like Beavis and Butthead. And Legends of the Hidden Temple. Legends bro. of the Hidden Temple. Rugrats. Uh, what's the other one that they... Uh, Dexter. Um, they're they're they doing did that- a Saved by the Bell. Oh my god, um, dude. I actually was house. just talking about that yesterday. And I actually watched that... that uh, New Saved by the Bell. It might have been the worst shit I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> I it never was fucking show. horrible. Like right from the opening, like the theme song was terrible, but the show was. Bro, Sam. Oh man, it was bad, dude. Like well, you know, like you know, like today, how yeah. everything has to have an abundance of social commentary, and it's like. And, like, it's fine if you put commentary into things where, you know, you're, like, it's kind of underlining and you, you have to think about it and you kind of figure it out. But when it's, like, shoved down your throat to the point where you're, like, th- this is – it's not even a show. It's just a fucking yeah. – it's just a it's just a special about, you know, these type of issues and stuff. And an after-school special. It, it really was. It's, like, an after-school school special. And it just wasn't funny. It was horrible. It was, like, the worst shit I've ever seen, man. So it's funny you bring that up. I was just talking about that. But they're remaking tons of shows, right? Like I saw there was big time. I didn't even, yeah. I didn't know this was coming out, and I was, I was like the other day. Oh, I was, Wonder I, Years. Yeah, I was in the kitchen. I was like making a sandwich or something like that, and I was like, "What the fuck, Wonder With Years?" Black family. With a black. I was like, "This is crazy," because they just, and then I heard that they're doing, they're remaking the Fresh Prince. I was like, "What the fuck?" Whoa, hold on, remaking or continuing? Remaking. And I was I'm like, down with that because I was like, well, it's it's kind of an oddball show to like redo because, you know, a lot of the narrative is actually true about Will Smith. Right. So I'm like, I yeah, don't, I don't I don't really know how that's going to work. But I, uh, yeah, I mean, I feel like that show like was built on Will Smith. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. like he he was the Fresh Prince, you know, who like who, literally who, nobody else can be the Fresh. Yeah, it was like, like literally, literally, right? Right. <laughs> Yeah, um, but yeah, I that's what did I want to say? Oh I yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel about that. Did you guys see any of the? I, I noticed that there was a Day of the Dead show. Like they're, uh, they're no. just yeah, but like you know shit. what? The trailer came out and like it literally pissed me and Dave off yeah. so much because it's like it comes up big on the screen and ode to George Romero, but oh, really? everything we're seeing looks nothing like Romero at all. <laughs> and I'm like, get the fuck out of so here! So what's the it was actually like it? insulting. Is it like, is it supposed to be taking place after data? Like, do they connect it no. to the, any of the, no, they just call it data, the day of the dead and do their I own thing. I didn't watch it. I, I didn't watch it either. Cause it looks like shit. Yeah. It, it honestly, it did kind of look like shit. I kind of caught a little bit of a glimpse of it. And I was like, eh, I don't know. Plus Dave was really, really angry. So I was like, okay. Yeah. I, I'm probably not... better than night of the living dead animated or whatever the fuck that was. I heard it was trash. Yeah. I heard it was cool that they did that, but the animation was really shitty. Which is kind of a yeah. kind of a shame that if you're going to do something like that, just adapt the actual material into animated film. 
why wouldn't you get good? I animators? feel like they've already done that. Didn't they do that back in like 2008? That they did actually do. It was like a reimagining. <laughs> it wasn't exactly like shot for shot kind of thing. I think it was a little bit different, but I mean, if you're going to do that, why don't you go all out and get good animators and, and do it properly? Right. Why half-ass your animation, especially nowadays where you can do it so well. <laughs> because people probably won't buy it. <laughs> yeah. Right. Why spend the money? Probably I'm not going to sell it. But then why do it in the first place? Right, it because just, it's it, public domain and it probably didn't cost them anything, and they're true. like, "Oh, that is very true. It is public domain, so yeah, you don't have to put a lot of effort yep. into it." But yeah, yeah, cool. probably like our seventy-five DC movies a year sells well. Why not just do this? It is true, man. But the thing with the DC animated films, they are good. Like, yeah. those are fucking awesome. That's what man. I hear. They they put out a few a year, and but they're all pretty good. I just actually picked up like. Well, I kind of got a little bit behind, but I got the the Batman Halloween ones and another Batman because that's really what they do. A lot of Batman and Superman. But I heard they're doing another Green like Lantern Superman. one. I, but the, it's variations of it, though. There's so many different types of stories and, and worlds and universes and shit. It's kind of cool. I let, I'm a big Batman fan. Like Batman. Yeah. Um, speaking You're of which, the, of the new Batman looks pretty bad to me, honestly. I don't think so. I think it looks pretty cool. Really? Yeah. Uh, I don't know, man. I'd rather watch the animated ones. That's just me. That's just <laughs> well, me. I mean, Joker was really good. Yeah, it was because it was done really dark. And I think that's the way you're gonna, you, that you should do something with, like that with that type of character. I love it, man. I've seen it three times and I just fuck. I was blown away every time, man. It's great. It's good. I would love to see what they're going to do with a sequel to that. Yeah, that would be cool. I thought Suicide Squad was fun. I didn't see it. I never seen the first ones. So I didn't bother. With I really it. don't watch you don't a lot need of to see the first one. live yeah, action. Movies, but it's it's James Gunn and it's R rated and it's bloody and yeah, you'd probably like it. Yeah, I guess if it's R rated, I mean it's, it, it does kind of change it a lot when you get into so R rated like stuff like yeah, decapitation and shit. It's fun. I mm-hmm. think you'd like it. Mm-hmm. So so you know how um like I think it was the week it was our Halloween show. I brought up that Dario Argento's Black Glasses. Yep. that I had seen that it was like finished filming well like literally the I swear like right after we posted that show Bloody Disgusting did an article on it <laughs> and and said that um, that's because I leaked know, the show to him right after we did it right yeah it was like basically said that that film is actually complete and it, it's getting a 2022 release so hmm. isn't it crazy we've been probably gonna about- be shitty I'm not gonna lie Probably. I mean, dude's 80 years old. Yeah. But. It can't be any worse than Giallo, though, move. man. That's that's all I'm going to say. And I know a lot of people out there are like, why do they keep saying it can't be any worse than Giallo? Like, Dracula 3D Giallo's was atrocious. not even as. Honestly, yeah. honestly, Dracula 3D has bad CG in it. The movie itself isn't overly that bad. It's more entertaining than Giallo. Giallo is fucking trash bags, man. That If, if, if there was one Dario Argento film that if I never had to watch again, it would be that one. That would be the film I would choose it, to me, never have Card to watch Player, again. Probably. Which one? I, uh, I think card player is his worst film. I actually like Giallo. I wouldn't even put it near, like I would put it like three or four spots. I'd probably say Fan of the opera. No, I like that one too. Oh dude. The, nah. the, the whole, the scene in the tunnel with the midget. Oh my God. That shit is the funniest shit ever, man. That's the funny. We're gonna get canceled. You can't say midget. Oh yeah, that's right. Don't you know? But you gotta admit though that at least that movie has one hilarious part in it, man. <laughs> like it's the fact I'm that Julian sure Sands masturbates with rats, like yeah, does it. and that shit too. The whole all the tunnel shit, man, is ridiculous. But uh, I don't know. I mean, anything that Argento's linked to piques my interest a little bit. Still, even I'm just though he's like, to see what the hell he's. Uh... You, you got to give this guy props, man. Like, and like, I want to be like, before, "Where's the Sandman, you fucking bastard?" Like, like, <laughs> you got to, you got to give this guy props, though, man. Because, like JP mentioned too, it's like every time you see an interview or hear about Argento, you know, anything Argento, he's always talking about making new movies, right? Yeah. It, sometimes they, he just takes your money and runs. But other no, times I don't think they it was him. I know I'm just. <laughs> I think he got involved with some shady people. Yeah, <laughs> but the point is, like, you know, I mean, it's pretty much confirmed this new one's coming out. The guy's like what 80 years old. He's still talking about all these projects and stuff. I mean, obviously, he's never going to get to do half the shit that he's wanting to do yeah. because he's 
let's face it, he's getting pretty fucking old. But but it's still pretty crazy that we're getting our gentle stuff. And you got to admit, though, man, if you're a fan of the guy's work, even though it hasn't been the greatest in the last 20 years, how could you not check it out? Right? Even if it's so like pe- half decent, I think that would be a success. It's like, wow, Argento yeah. made a half decent. Because at, at this point in time, we're thinking – Dracula 3D is his last ever project. And that was 10 years ago. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, that's the way we've been looking at it is like, this is his filmography, but it's kind of cool that like, Hey, there's actually going to be one more entry at least into his filmography. And I, I find that cool because once they're gone, they can't make another movie. So it's like, yeah. And this, and this one sounds, <laughs> it, it's definitely more appealing. Yeah, they can. George did. He released a new movie and he was dead. <laughs> well, you know, that, <laughs> yeah. that shit happens, but at least with this one, it sounds a little bit more original. Like I, re- I remember when uh, the Dracula project got announced, I was like, "Really? A dr- like a, we're doing a fucking vampire movie? We're and doing a Dracula story?" Because he'd already done Phantom of the Opera. Yeah, like, and that, and that hell, was you know? that was the thing. And I was like, I wasn't really like overly because I mean, there's like a million adaptations of Dracula and stuff. And I'm just like, oh my god, seriously, another one. But this one, now you know, with the Martin director's cut, he's going to release two movies when he's dead. Maybe. What is that? Oh, um, the yeah. Because what, what did they find? They found a, a three two and, and a half, half hour, three hour, three hour, hour three, of three and a half hours. Yeah. Of which one? Did you hear about that moods? No. Um, of which one? Martin. Martin. They three found and a half three hour. and a half hour cut of Martin. Oh, they actually what? Yeah, they yeah. thought it was like lost or gone, but they found. Well, because that was that always rumored that it was cut. it was shot as like kind of like an epic, almost right, and then wow, three and a half hour. The black cut. and white. I wonder yeah. what they'll end up releasing that full, and they can't be full three and a half hours. I, you know what's funny? I just wa- I just rewatched Martin a couple weeks back. I was in the mood for watching some uh, Romero's that I hadn't seen in a while, and I was like, you know what? I got to watch Martin. And Martin is a fucking fantastic movie, man. Yeah, it is a really, never really damn good movie. Like every time I watch it, I always love it. But this time, it just like really hit home with me and like what he was doing with it. And there's a lot of shit to talk about in that movie. Like that's the thing about Romero that's so interesting is that he he's exactly what I was talking to talking about earlier. You know, like these new filmmakers, they really shove the commentary down your throat and, and forget to actually make an entertaining movie like the new Black Christmas bullshit. It's not. It's not. It's not a fucking movie. It's just, it's just a PSA announcement. You know, it's just a fucking after school special. It's bullshit. Mm. It's garbage. Like if you're going to make a movie, at least make it entertaining. If you're going to put some commentary in there. See, this is what Romero was so good at, man. He would make these movies and like, you can take it for face value. But if you're, if you're kind of looking into it and thinking about shit, like he's saying a lot in Martin, like a fucking ton. It's really well done. It's really cool. I think, it's yeah, I think it's probably about time to uh, do another uh, Romero spotlight on his non-dead films. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, heard the, the, I heard the slumber party massacre movie is not an offensive thing like black Christmas. I still have to watch it, but yeah. Oh uh, yeah. I forgot about that. I, I heard I that heard it's, 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 it, you know, it does jam it down your throat a little bit, but it's not like the craziest shit. And I also heard, I, I did see, I did watch a couple like spoiler re- spoiler free reviews on it and from both people that i watch review that film they said you can tell that it was done for tv but it's also that could just be the cut that we saw on tv it feels like there probably is more uh, to the film right it feels like there's probably more gore and there's probably other scenes and stuff and well, see, once it gets released TV on physical if it like does so big now that it's yeah. like you don't even need to cut it anymore, really. I know, and that's the thing. Maybe it was new. To, maybe it's just kind of filling it out. Maybe kind of owing to the original Slumber Party Massacre, which is oddly sleazy as shit and directed by a woman. But I don't know. I, I feel like he could be right. Maybe he's wrong. I don't know. Mm. But I'm curious to check it out anyways because I'm a big fan of uh, the original film. So it's a fun trilogy, man. It is. But, uh... Yeah, um... I'm. I'll probably see it before the end of the year because I gotta get on prepping, dude. <laughs> I'm at forty two. Wow, you've watched forty two movies from this year. That's pretty crazy. That's pretty good, actually. For you, yeah. I'm only at uh, twenty six, I think. Well, if I wasn't on the other top ten, I figured I might as well. Do yeah, this you totally bailed on nineteen seventy. I didn't really watch a lot of new films during the summer. Like, I honestly didn't really watch a lot of movies in the summer in general because I was gone so much but i did did like i did manage to watch up to this point 57 movies um it has been 
<laughs> I'll say not the greatest year so far. I haven't watched a lot of shit bags though. That's the oddball thing. Just there, a I lot of watched all the good ones though. Either a lot of average. I started watching Willy's Wonderland last night. I don't know. I've seen a lot of decent movies. Like I watched Censor and I watched The Columnist, which I thought was kind of cool. Censor is overrated as fuck. I didn't. I didn't love it. Actually, honestly, man, and this sounds hilarious, but one of my favorite movies of the year is Night Books. It's kind of funny. Yeah. It was fun, man. And there's been a lot of fun movies. I thought Werewolves Within, which is not going to be for everybody, but it it had some legit laugh out loud funny moments in it. Um, and then people are all over the place with this year, man. Like a lot of people love Candyman. I was not one of them. I didn't yeah. either. I, I loved it. Too. I thought Malignant was like was good. It. It okay, was good. the funny thing about Malignant for me, and I've mentioned this before, is that I went into the movie not knowing anything about the narrative at all. So I I'm still like, don't know anything, so don't tell me. Okay, it's a fucking great movie. But it just it it combines like two things to my <laughs> for myself, and I was just, like yeah. left there going, "What the fuck did I just watch?" I enjoyed it though; it was fun. Um, yeah, good. that's one I got to check out too. But yeah, it's been it's been kind of a weird year, man. Like I think the the night house was was pretty cool. I hated yes. Halloween ki- kills. I'm not gonna lie, man. That shit was it was bad. It was it really bad. bad. We're not getting into that. Yeah, I don't want to get into it. No, I don't want to talk about that shit either. <laughs> but um, I don't know. There's a bunch of movies I'm looking forward to. Um, hopefully, they don't disappoint. But Last Night in Soho. Yeah, that's one I, I want to check out. And then there's there's a bunch of other ones and stuff. Like, come what, Play. When the uh, hell is come Texas play, Chainsaw coming come out? Come Play is another one on my list to, to really check out. That one looked really good. And um, I thought VHS 94 was... was pff, it's okay. It was, a, it was a big step up from 3, I'll tell you that. The, the second story is fucking fantastic. Yeah, the second story is the best story. And we were talking about this on Skype uh, on Friday, actually. I love the second story. It's probably yeah. it's probably the second best story behind Lost Haven, to be honest. It's yeah. fucking great. It is good, man. Um, it's, it's really well executed. And Dave, like me and Dave were just like over the moon on that one. We're like, that one's yeah. such a good one. Yeah. yeah. Watson was telling us to check out um, Medium on Shutter. Yeah, that's another one. And then also Titan, Titan. Yeah, that one is on that's my list, called. and definitely got to be checking that one out, man. Yes, great, great fucking movie. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that one's pretty much at the top of my queue list. So, right. Yeah, but I will suggest not checking out Don't Breathe too. That movie was uh, trash bags. I actually was getting ready to watch. It's so it convenient, moods. Don't, <sighs> it's such a bad. I want to talk. There's there's one part in it that's like the most convenient thing ever, where the fucking guy finds his way somewhere from like ten miles away, and he's fucking blind. And it's like fucking awful. It's trash. Pissed yeah, it's <sighs> like like dogs don't have that good of sense. Like how? No, that's fucking bullshit. I'll just put it this way: if you were if you were a pretty big fan of the first one, you might enjoy this one. If you didn't really care for the first one, I would not check this out at all. I didn't hate it. I just thought it wasn't that good. <laughs> yeah, no, it's not that good at all. <laughs> so, uh, Jeremy, did you want to talk about that thing? All right, here we go. The tenth annual. Well, for me, Music Box of Horrors twenty twenty one. Before we get into that. They just announced, I'm fucking super pumped for this, on December 16th, the man himself, Joe Bob, is coming to the music box and do a double feature of Night of, uh, Silent, Silent, Night like Dead, Silent Night Deadly Night on 35mm and Santa Slay on 35mm. Oh, what a Joe fun, Bob, what a fun night that would be. <laughs> oh, dude. I can't wait to watch Santa Slay with a fucking audience. It's gonna be amazing. The opening, with Joe Bob. The dude. opening Joe scene Bob. is gonna have people in stitches. With fucking Joe Bob. Yeah, man. I didn't Listen, even know that Joe, movie was Joe released. Bob's sixty-eight years old, man. Like we gotta take everything we can get from him, man. <laughs> really, sixty-eight? Yeah, I guess so. I guess that makes sense. Yeah, dude. Yeah. I just, yeah. Didn't, I just wouldn't think that Santa Slay would be on thirty-five. I would think that because it wasn't in theaters. <laughs> I'm surprised yeah, but that, back then, like, uh, well, 2005. No, that that was when digital really started. Yeah, but there were still filmmakers shooting stuff on on film in in 2005. But the, yeah, you're right. That's still like the ugly digital era. It's very the popular. Super ugly digital era. The worst. 2005 might even be. <laughs> it's an ugly year. Yeah. Yeah. To like, I, I remember who who was I talking to? But I was I can't remember. But we were talking. To, oh, it was Dave Z, and he was like, I wouldn't mind getting two thousand four or six or something. And I'm like, I think it was Dave. It might not have been Dave. I, I can't remember. But I was like, dude, if there's one thing I don't want to do anytime in the near future is watch any year 
that close to 2000. Like two, even 2007 yeah. is way different. I agree. Four, five, and six. Seven is when you got oh. the hardcore movies. <laughs> yeah, it, it started getting a little better in that the, at that time. You can tell that Dave well, Z yeah, didn't do the 2005 show like, with us. Uh, inside and all hills have eyes, all kind of good shit. But he listened to the show. He he heard us mention how ugly the year was like 400 times. You know, if it that might was... not have been Dave. I can't remember who I was talking to. It might have been Duncan or something. But yeah, um, it was yeah. I was like, man, dude, 2004. <laughs> I, I just don't want that at no all. i still can't believe that he omitted 93 <laughs> i know it's like the best year of the 90s it's okay. not the best year of the 90s it does it oh. it has it has a lot of better films in other years but yeah no it's it was still it's just put it this way it's one of the more it's probably one of the better years i wouldn't say it's the best year but yeah it just seemed like an odd one considering you could do 97 which i think is well, really bad See, here's the big 98. difference. Right? 98 is really bad. I think too. he's lo- he said he was looking at 93 and he didn't see a clear cut number one. Whereas like 97, I mean, you got like funny games. Like, so it, it, I mean, there's like at least one or two films that are probably like a, a number one. Oh, Possible yeah, that's contender. weird. Yeah. I forgot Jean Roland did a movie in 97. Yep. Yeah, that's right. Anyway. Music Box of Horrors 2021, the 10th 24-hour horror marathon that I went to. This time I did pretty good. I made it to 640 in the morning, which is pretty good for me. So Maybe. how many films were left that you didn't get to see? Two? Two. Phantasm 2 and Arachnophobia. Yeah, that's really good that you oh, made it that Phantasm 2 and Arachnophobia? Wow. Yeah. I would have had pretty to good films. Phantasm 2, man. I was fucking dying. I know, but Phanta- I love Phantasm 2. Yeah. So... <laughs> How'd it start off? Start off 12 p.m. We have William Castle's Straight Jacket, with, which we reviewed on the show with John Crawford. Crawford. Actually, Moods wasn't here for that one. Oh, yeah. No, that, was the, that was the one uh, Just Me and You episode. Yeah. Straight Jacket, directed by William Castle, shown on 35mm. Pretty okay print. It broke the projector a few times, which is pretty <laughs> hilarious. But, yeah, like... Four times in the movie, it just shut off, you know. It was Joan Crawford's off. evil spirit, man, breaking that shit. Man, she she had a Pepsi endorsement at that time, and there's so many Pepsi references in that movie. It's pretty <laughs> fucking hilarious. She was like, I could o- I'll only be in this movie if you let me put my Pepsi endorsement, because I guess at the time she was endorsed by Pepsi. Wait, this is so, actually true? Yeah. So it's, throughout oh. the movie, you <laughs> see, like, Pepsi just pop up. It's in, kind like, of funny, because I, I can't even imagine Joan Crawford even using Pepsi in her for her drinks. Yeah. Well, she was fucking wasted in half that movie. Well, that's what I'm saying. She was a total boozer, right? But I'm just saying it's oh, funny because, yeah. like, I don't think she used mix. She was like a straight yeah. girl. Yeah. But I love Straight Jacket. It's a fun movie. It is a fun, a fun movie. movie. It is yeah. a good movie. Yeah. 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 All right. Next up, 205. We have Dr. Black and Mr. Hyde with William Crane in attendance. William Crane is an old motherfucker. That dude's like 75. He's only made two movies. He only made Blackula and Dr. Black and Mr. Hyde. And, um,. This was presented again on 35 millimeter, and this print was fucking rough. It had that pinkish tint that you get when movies aren't taken care of very well, and you could tell that this movie probably didn't get the most love over the years uh, in preserving the print because it was not a very, uh, very well taken care of print. But it's a, it's a fun movie. It's very slow, and it's very. It takes a while for it to get going. Yeah, you're it's lucky not, they didn't play that one at like six in the morning. <laughs> yeah, it's not as it's not as good as it's not a, it's not as good as Blackula, in my opinion. But uh, it's still an interesting movie. That's because it, it it it's not a, like I mean Blackula sounds like it should be a comedy, but like we said yeah. before, it's not. And Doctor Black, Doctor Black, Mister Hyde, it's I don't know, it's it's definitely a little bit more comedic. That's for sure. There's like this one scene with this pimp where he, this car's fucking driving towards him and he's a be- his back's against the wall and he pulls out his knife like he's going to fucking stab the car. It's, it's hilarious. It's the funniest <laughs> moment of the movie. But William Crane, very humble dude. Like I said, he's only directed two movies, but he's, he's actually said he's working on a new movie, surprisingly. So wow. we'll see what happens. He's going to make a, a, a third feature film. After that... Uh, 1924, The Hands of Orlock. This was screened on 16 millimeter, and this every silent film every year they do a live score to it. So that was pretty cool. We had another 
live score to this one. Hence, Dr. Orlick is not a Dr. Orlick. Hands of Orlick is, is it's an interesting silent film. It's not my favorite, but it's directed by Robert Wien, of course, who did uh, The Cabinet of Dr. Caligari. So yeah. it's an it's an interesting movie. Um, if you haven't seen it, check it out. I, I don't really know how much it is horror, in my opinion, but it's still an interesting uh, a silent film from 1924. After that, very interesting and rare, rare credit. 615, we had Ghost Watch from 1992. Super... Now, super this is, interesting wow this, that's this cool this is the only this is only the second time ever that it's screened theatrically um the first time it screened in like a small little thing uh in britain when it came out and this is only the second time well, ever this that is it's a tv movie right this, this, yeah uh, it was put out by the bbc supposedly the people who put this the marathon together had a hard time getting the bbc to agree to let them screen this but for some reason they pulled it off and they uh they were able to screen it. Really weird movie to, to play at this. I was very surprised to see that. Have they, you ever seen it before? Yeah, I saw it on Shutter when it came out. Oh, okay, yeah. I still they haven't watched cool. it, believe it or not. Oh, really? Yeah. Dude, such an interesting film in like the found footage yeah. Uh, yeah. subgenre because well before the Blair Witch Project. Um, but it, it was one of those it, – it basically, you hear the stories of when they played the radio yeah. play of um, – War, War of the Worlds, Worlds, and everybody thought it was real. Kind of right, a similar right. thing happened with Ghost, Ghost Walk. Because, because they put a message at the beginning of the film that said, this is all fiction and reality, but people miss that, and they tuned in, and they see people on their TV that they usually see on the BBC in this movie, and they're like, oh shit, this is real. So it caused a lot of um, uh, hoopla Sh- when it came stress. out. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, this... I, I couldn't really tell from the audience if people really liked this one. I think horror fans, of course, liked it, but I don't. I don't know the uh, the overall gist of the movie. But next at eight fifteen p.m., we have the world theatrical premiere of The Granny from nineteen ninety five. Now, why couldn't this be from nineteen ninety four? But from nineteen ninety five. So supposedly, with this movie, there is original negatives out there. They're in a storage locker that's owned by the director, but the director was out of the country, so they couldn't get the original negatives to give to so supposedly Finnegar Syndrome to make a Blu-ray of this movie. So they fucking screened this motherfucker on VH motherfucking ass. I mean, they I mean just, that feels like it should be. <laughs> I mean, they just they just put this tape in a fucking VCR and boom, there Rejected it is. On that the shit. <laughs> was the tape at least decent or what? Yeah, it was pretty decent. I was watching going, hey, this looks pretty good. I mean, it looked better than Dr. Black and Mr. Hyde. Dude, so, I was- when, so you watched a VHS tape on the big screen. That's like, crazy. Yeah, it I don't know good, another man. human that's done that. Projected on the big screen with sound and everything. That's I mean, crazy. The Granny is, is fucking hilarious. Who Have you seen The Granny? No, I don't think I've ever seen it before. <clears throat> oh, dude. So that's coming out from Vinegar Syndrome then? Possibly. We'll see what happens. It's but. definitely a Vinegar Syndrome type title for oh, sure. Sounds, big, big sounds time. like it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Stella Stevens in it, and uh, she's just fucking insane in this movie. It's just such a fun, bat shit, absolute bat shit, crazy movie. It's on YouTube if you guys get time. I recommend you go and check it out if you like crazy 90s, you know, straight to video kind of movies. <laughs> um, definitely the, the the most fun movie of the year, of the night. Next up, we had a a movie, a brand new movie called The Scare of 61st. Now, this is directed by this broad named Dasha Nikosova, who I guess is an Instagram chick. And um, I don't know. I just feel like this movie, you got a white girl who has some kind of power, and she made a movie about uh, – it's about these two characters who move into an apartment that was used to be owned by Jeffrey Epstein – and um fuck? wait this you, is the actual plot <laughs> yeah <laughs> this is the okay. this is the synopsis while out apartment hunting college pals noel and addy stumble upon the deer of a lifetime a posh duplex on manhattan's easter upper side but after moving in a more sinister picture of the apartment emerges when a mysterious woman arrives and claims the property used to belong to the infamous and recently deceased jeffrey epstein so um did it mention that he didn't kill himself it's a it's a weird like body horror sexual aggressive kind of movie i was well that makes sense i wasn't a fan of it i just thought it was like i said a a white girl who's trying to make a movie about something controversial and i just i didn't think it it worked that well it's coming out on shutter shutter picked up did it get did it get pretty rapey uh there's no rapes but there's like um she like masturbates with fruit and things like that it's a it's a very 
weird movie. I wasn't a huge what fan kind of it. fruit because that matters. <laughs> There's like rub like oranges up against her twat. It's like that. It's just I I maybe know. bananas. Hmm. I don't know. You have to see it. Like I said, Shutter not a very it up. phallic uh, fruit right there, man. <laughs> yeah. Jesus. I definitely think it's going to be one that's going to uh, tour the community in half. I think half of the people will probably really dig it, and the other half of the people are like, this is total horseshit. Did because, Taylor like, like it? No, she hated it like me. So I just feel like uh, with like Black Christmas and things like that, it's trying to make a statement. You're like saying it's woke? woke? Yeah, a little bit. Okay. All right. After that, How the, wait. Hold on. How the hell did they afford a Jeffrey Epstein apartment? <laughs> I feel like that would cost a lot. <laughs> I don't know. And there's like a lot of like Jeffrey Epstein and like other people that he was associated with and things like that spread throughout this movie. So I was like, it, it's a, it was shot on 16 millimeter. So it's just a it's a weird hmm. weird movie. I think it's come it should come out on this in Shutter in this year. Next up, 12:30. A movie we just did a commentary for, but I'm always happy to watch it. Mr. Rodriguez's The Faculty again. I I'm forgot five did millimeter. That. I mean, how many times I could always watch The Faculty? That movie's fucking great. Once, once the Mirror Max logo comes up and you got Offspring playing in the background, it's just like you can watch that movie. Yeah, over and over again. It's just a great. It's just a great fucking movie. I love The Faculty. Probably the best print of the marathon so far. Well, for the rest of the marathon, it was really, really good. Really good, taken care of, and uh, huge fan of the faculty. It's always always a fun film, especially from that late of the '90s of the Floating Heads era. It's good to get something quality, and everybody's in that movie. Like it's insane when you really watch it. Like it's it it would give Dave a boner. Well, it did give Dave a boner because it has like everybody in this movie. But I love the faculty. Next up, 2.35, we have a rare screening of the um, international version, 110-minute international version of Tenenbrae, which is supposedly, it's never came out on home video. There's like a Japanese bootleg, they said, but it's never been out um, before. The only way you can watch it is this uh, is this print. So it's a 110-minute version of Tenenbrae. I'm not a diehard. Hmm. Kind of Bray fan, so I probably couldn't tell you what the differences Hold are. On. How are you not? Well, okay, I couldn't tell you the differences either. But I was about to say, how are you not a big fan of Tenebrae? I like Tenebrae. I'm not like a diehard like fan of it. Like I like I would know the differences between the. Yeah, okay, I agree with you there. I, I probably wouldn't either. I've Especially at two thirty-five in the morning, I was like, I have no. <laughs> so it, the difference. so it's roughly like nine or ten minutes longer. Yeah, I'd like yeah, to see what. Nine long. <clears throat> yeah, I'd like to see what's different about that. Hmm. Yeah. So that was interesting. It's always good to watch an Argento. All right. The film I waited for the most. At 4.40 a.m., we had That's a Cal- weird time slot for that. We had Cal Fair on 35 millimeter, the one film yeah. that I wanted to see the most. They played that at 4.45 in the morning, and you had like to read that shit? Like, if they played it at like 12.30, they'd be like, okay, I'm out of here. But it's like I had to wait. I had to see Cal Fair I'm just shocked. I'm just shocked that you that they would play a subtitled movie so late in the morning. Like Joe Bob played fucking Daughters of Darkness at like three AM and killed everybody. Oh, I was so slow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That almost that almost murdered me, not even gonna lie. That yeah. almost killed me. Um but yeah, usually, that's and they usually don't pick like this extreme of kind of movies to show. They usually don't pick fuck up movies like this. It's not really that fucked up of a movie, but they usually don't pick, you know movies that that push the push the envelope a little bit like this one i think that's maybe why they showed it at five o'clock in the I just, morning i just think something like that would be more enjoyable if you're more awake since you have to read it i 100 percent agree I, you know? I thought that was a weird slot yeah, for it just that kind of brings down especially the considering of the out film. of the entire lineup like jeremy that would have been like in my like top one or two or three. Yeah, they should have put that I fucking that Espe- the Epspin one or whatever the fuck that white girl movie. <laughs> they should have put yeah. that one in a four forty five slot, man. That would have made a lot more sense. Yeah, it's just like what this is like such a rare movie to show on film. It's like why would you show it at five o'clock in the morning? Right. It's just like it's stupid. But I I love Cal Fair. I picked it for my my pick for Christmas for this year. It's just Even- such a downing sad movie. I mean, I don't remember it having that much dialogue in it, though. Like, it doesn't have an abundance, does it? It's not, like, super mm. dialogue-heavy, is it? I can't remember. Nah, it's been a while. Uh, I think there's a, lo- there's a lot of sequences where there's not dialogue and shit, though, right? 
Well, there's some good. There's a lot of sequences where it's just that dude, not other dude talking. Right, right. Um, it's been a, it's but, been a minute since I've seen it a couple times, but yeah, it's been a few years. It's a tw- it's a dark movie, but it's yeah. it's it's really really good. Hopefully, it gets picked this year for uh for my Christmas pick. And last up, 1990, Tom Sweeney's Night of the Living Dead remake. It's a fun movie. I mean. It's it's just like Tom Savini is like okay I'm gonna make this movie and make it as gory and bloody and crazy as I can. That's basically what he did. You know and, what I love it. I, I watched it last Halloween. Um, I hadn't seen it in like ten years, and uh, I'd always been just like yeah it's good. But like when I rewatched it, I was like man I really like this version. Still don't like it more than the original, but I I do like it a lot. It, it took me a long time to actually like appreciate it because i saw it roughly about the time it came out and i was like why is this fucking movie like i'm being confused too i'm like why is this fucking movie in color like i i kept thinking it was like the original one like it was always fucking my mind a little bit i could never enjoy it like i could like the original one it took it took a few watches when i was younger to to finally appreciate that it was a, a decent remake you know what i'm saying the big change is what they do with the barbara character right right that, they, yeah. they make it more of like a strong well, woman well, didn't George write this or write? Yeah, I think so. He, yeah, I think George wrote it. So yeah, he, it, it was basically well, an attempt to sort of not to to regain lost income from because we all know that it was yeah. mistakenly. Doesn't Savini uh, have a writing credit right. on it too, or maybe I'm mistaken yeah, th- on that? I think he does. Yeah, I think he, him and Romero wrote it together. Yeah, yeah. But well, the interesting thing was like Tom Savini was supposed to work on the original Night of the Living Dead, but he was in Vietnam. That's right. So yeah, uh, I have a new appreciate. It's a fucking gory ass movie. It's kind of crazy when you watch it, but um, I'm a fan of Night of the Living Dead. It's good. This is a pretty good marathon, man. I mean, that was yeah, a, that man, was a this very is, good lineup. It's a what very, were the last two? Phantasm and Arachnophobia. Yeah, just like yeah. whatever. Yeah, it's a pretty well rounded 24 hour marathon, man, for sure. Some interesting yeah, picks good. right there. I you did good. Was, you made it far, dude. I made it far. It sucks that you didn't get to see Phantasm 2, though. That's brutal. Made it to 8 o'clock. Hmm. So, Pretty good. Four but hours, every year, yeah. they, always, they, always pull out, they always pull out the weird stuff. I bet it is stuff, insanely so. fun to program that event. I think it's expensive. It probably is, but it's probably it's probably also a lot of like pulling strings and like knowing people and stuff. But it's probably really fun to like select the lineup and figure out what you're gonna do. Like, like I said, uh, with what was what was the one that he was talking about? Like uh, something, one movie. It's like they they got it in the day before the print. Sh- oh, Calvair, Calvair. The print showed up the day before the marathon because it was stuck in customs because it was coming from Belgium, so it barely made it. And I would have been like, I would have been fucking pissed off. They would have canceled that shit, but you know it's stressful. You would have to assume getting all these prints shipped out to where they're coming from, and then with the pandemic and all that kind of stuff, you don't know if they're going to show up because of customs. Because a lot of these prints came from other countries, and then at the end of the month, they're doing a screening of um, uh, what are they doing? They just announced a uh, Suicide Club in thirty five, and that's coming from Japan. So it's just like they they find cool stuff. So I, I I appreciate what they do. It's a really cool, really cool thing that they do every year. And I was kind of bummed that it got canceled last year. And I never thought it was going to happen again, or at least not for a little while because of what's going on. So it's pretty fun. You, you should come one time, JP. I think you have fun. Yeah, dude, that would, it's probably a, a bucket list thing for me to do because I, I think we, I would have fun. Too. And we should talk about it now. October, 2022. 22 shots meet up at cinema wasteland everybody better come it's gonna be fucking fun be there or be square be there or be yeah square. i bet all the people that live right by there don't even show up and then i'll show up and it's like 2500 <laughs> miles away fuck it's gonna be fun gonna have all the homies come out yep yes yeah, sir besides jp of course actually it's a lot easier like for that. me to get yeah, there now no. WestJet actually flies to chicago now so or i mean to no. uh, cleveland and actually Chicago too, I think. So, but yeah, so that's everything for the 24 hour yep, marathon. That's, that's it. Cooley. Oh yeah. sounds like it's uh, a fun, fun time. Um, 
yeah, it still did not seem Phantasm 2. That's kind of a disappointment, but would have been cool, man. Would have been cool. I don't know. I'm, I'm pumped to see Santa slay with Joe Bob. I think that's going to be fucking awesome. <laughs> it's pretty interesting, actually. But uh, yeah, I guess uh, I guess we might as well move this along unless we got anything else to, to say. You got anything, JP? Mm-hmm. Uh, no, that's it. That's it? All right. So that's going to conclude the intro, and we'll be back with some featured reviews. <laughs> Now, our feature presentation. Yo, who this? Yo, Moods, it's your boy, the ill-mented funky child, calling you to remind you that the featured reviews on this episode contain spoilers. Aw, oh, yeah, man, that's right, brother. Thanks for the heads up, playa. Now go back to being an unproductive asshole. Fuck you. I tell, I tell your listeners to stop being so dumb, silly, sensitive. Yeah. All right, so get into the featured reviews here on episode 215, week two of Italian Horror Month. And like we said off the top of the show, we got Sergio Garoni in the house. Um, so we're going to take it back to the year 1969 <laughs> with a film simply titled Django the Bastard. I always thought it was such a strange title for a movie. Like, is he really? That's not the original cover, though. Isn't there another title, American title? Oh, there's probably a million. There's a million titles for every one of Django's movies. But like this one, I've always known it as being Django the Bastard. How many Django movies are there? Do you know? Like like 25. Yeah, there's like 25 to 35. I've seen... There's only I like feel one like I've official. Seen a video that said there was like eighty. Yeah, it, it depends <laughs> on alternate names and things like that. But I th- there's only like one official sequel, I think, to the original Django, and yeah, everything is. else is either renamed Django or unofficial sequels, and it's ridiculous, man. It's ridiculous, and of course, another one. There's a, there's a lot of Django movies I think out there that don't even have a character named Django in them. They're just titled that. So at least this one actually has a Django character, but. All right, so Django the Bastard. Uh, Quick little synopsis. A mysterious stranger appears to take terrifying revenge on former Confederate officers who during the Civil War betrayed and were responsible for the massacre of their units. So, if you... Can I ask you a question? Yes. Why'd you pick this guy? Mm, Because we never done him before. Why did you he pick sucks. the guy? That, why did the, why did you pick the guy that you picked? I don't know. I like this movie though. I fig- I I, thought, I definitely thought this one was the best out of the three because <laughs> this movie at least has some really nice tracking shots and some. It actually has a really good shot at the at the end of the movie. It's, it's definitely the most well made movie out of the three. Oh I yeah, think, in my opinion. Oh yeah, the, the, this movie. I mean. So, I mean, if you if if you know anything about westerns or even spaghetti westerns and stuff like that, I mean, this is not really any different than most of the movie's setups in general. I mean, this movie right here, Django is basically the man with no name. It's Clint Eastwood to oh, a T. Yeah, he yeah, wear, he wears sure. the same hat. He's got the same. And he wears a cigar. <laughs> the cigar. He's got the, he smokes the same cigar. He's got the same non facial expressions. You know, he's very robotic yep. and stuff. And he's got the same poncho. Like everything about this character, this Django character in this movie, is Clint Eastwood in the Man with No Name trilogy kind of thing right so yeah. but it's it's very typical storyline you know a guy a stranger shows up into a western town and he's out there um on a revenge it's just a revenge tale kind of thing but what separates this movie from the typical spaghetti western is is the ambiguity of this django character because the setup is you know um of course it's the the backstory is it's taken place during the civil war and you know confederates that he's that are supposed to be loyal to him um, basically turn on them and massacres his unit. And he's supposedly one of the characters that dies. They leave him for dead. And, and the people in this town assume that he had died. And now it's like years later and stuff. And he's shown up. I don't and, think the people in the town assume he's dead. I just think the generals assume. That no. He's yeah. Dead. Well, that's, that's what I meant. I meant the guys that were yeah, responsible for the massacre. They don't know who he is, yeah. No, yeah, nobody else knows him except for the four or five people that were part of the unit. Plus the big wig in the town. Right. Yeah. And um, so that's the thing that kind of separates this one is because he shows back up and they're like, what the fuck? Like this guy was dead and it does keep it going through the film 
because you, you're always questioning because there is moments in this film where Django's character just kind of shows up in places and things like that. But, you know, so you're questioning, you're like, okay, is this guy actually alive or is he a ghost? Because you're not sure because you're given this backstory that he fucking died. And it's the way it's shot too. I mean, there's no spaghetti yeah. Westerns that are this dark. It's very atmospheric. It's very quiet at times. And it really does set the mood. It's got some really good, um, uh, Sam, said Sam, Kane is pretty dark too. Yeah, and well, that's the thing, right? And that's that's kind of the oddball one out too. But you know, this one really does kind of set it up like it's got that horror mood. It's very well, I was moody, waiting atmospheric. To see what what your excuse was going to be of why this was allowed? Because he's a ghost. He's not a ghost, though. They even say that he's not a ghost in the movie. Well, towards the, I mean, towards the end, it gets away from what you've been thinking the entire film. I mean, because he could possibly be it because there's no evidence that he isn't, right? Until there's moments in the third act where he's obviously human, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's the thing. But up until that point, it, it does keep you kind of guessing because you got to you got to admit, man, it's very, it, like I said, it's very dark. It's very, it's got that real kind of horror soundtrack to it and very atmospheric. And he is showing up in places and you're just like, what the fuck? Like, why is he doing this and shit like that? But, you know. Of course, this is a spaghetti western with horror elements to it, right? I wouldn't suggest that this is a strictly a horror film by any means, but it does have those certain dark elements, kind of like, you know, um, in God Said a King, right? It, it it has those kind of elements. This one, I think, is a little bit more, but overall, it's a it's a good movie. I mean, it doesn't it doesn't actually, you know, separate itself as a western um, too too much because it does the same things that a lot of other films. It's just the way it presents itself is a lot different. It's very, very dark, but I think it's a good film. And it, like you said, it shot very well. The it is J- shot very well. The, J- the Django character, and it scored really well too. And I, I actually think it's even edited pretty well too, but the score and the atmosphere in this film is like second to none. There's like no spaghetti Westerns that have this type of feel to it. Um, but I got to say though, like uh, Anthony Stefan, who plays Django in this film is utterly hilarious. Like this is the most stone robotic one liner interpretation of Django I've ever seen. It's so funny. Like this guy's face doesn't move through the entire movie. Everything he says is like those one liners that Eastwood is doing and yeah. stuff, but he barely moves. And it's like, it's so robotic to the point where it's almost cartoonish. And it's like unintentionally funny because I don't know. I just, his character cracks me up through the whole movie. It's pretty funny, but I think it does suffer from not being as bloody as it possibly should be. Cause if you were going, (laughs) that's the thing. And like, you're going like, you have this dark appeal to it. I think adding in that little bit of blood and maybe a little bit of gore and stuff. Cause there is a lot of kills in it. I think what it it really kind of weird because if you switched a pistol with a knife, everybody'd be like, this is a horror movie. You know what I mean? That exactly. It's such a big difference whenever it's uh, a bladed weapon versus a, a gun. Like right. when when you're getting shooting people, it's like it seems more actiony than horror, but it, you're still murdering someone, you right. know? Right. And and like you know, typical westerns, a lot of people fucking die in this movie, right? Yeah. But you know, that's the thing. Like you're right. You know, if you use a different weapon, it's it's pretty much more on the horror elements to it and stuff. But I think yeah, it you'd does. Be like, that's a fucking slasher. <laughs> yeah, I think it does suffer from not actually showing a little bit more blood and gore. Because if you or if you had this idea that you wanted to keep this this ambiguity up about you know this our lead character of if, if, if is he alive or dead or whatever, I think throwing in those other elements of you know heighten up the kills and the blood and stuff would have really kind of sold that even more. I think that's one area that the movie does suffer. But you know, as a western. I think it's like a really good film. Like it's legitimate. So I don't know. My, my only uh, hang up is on the plot where um, I feel like the way that they did the flashback scene in the um, uh, con- Confederate army. I feel like they didn't like, I feel like that could have been done a little bit better because <clears throat> basically all we know is that the, high-ranking officials turn, basically became traitors, but yeah. we don't really know why. And it seems kind of weird that that multiple high-ranking officers would turn on their squad for unknown reasons. Yeah, it, it, do, it does seem odd that the Confederates would do that to other Confederates, right? Because they, they well, seem not, like... Not only just Confederates, but high-ranking Confederates. Usually right. to get into a point of high rank you have to show some sort of you know Mm -hmm. extreme loyalty and and devotion to right the the army so it's kind of weird that it was high-ranking officials that actually were the ones to sort of turn and then also the fact that we're you know we're the hero was a 
Confederate soldier who were supposed to feel bad for that he was fighting against the 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 North and was traded over, but like in reality, it's like yeah, well, we kind of wanted the South to lose, so I, it would have <laughs> it would have made more sense, but at the same time, not if it was the Union fighting in like I, I couldn't I couldn't really see them fucking turning on their people anyways. So it is kind of a it's well, kind of it, make, it wouldn't it make more sense for like a hero to be a part of the union at least because at least then he would yeah. be but then could you see the union turning on their guys and doing what the like what these confederates did kind of thing i could see i can't it, even see the confederates doing it so. i know it is, it is weird right but i guess i guess it, it would have made a lot more sense if they had have explained why these high-ranking officials turned on their own guys and massacred them and because yeah you're right like the last scene is Django laying on the ground and then it just cuts to the present again um, well, the, well, this movie is actually out of order though them, too but they they let the they basically were working with the union because the union come in and slaughter them yeah 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 it is it, 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 a little bit of an explanation would have been kind of nice for sure yeah i, I totally it, get it's that. not the worst thing in the world but it feels like it's i sort feel of like, like doesn't matter essentially and it's like i kind of wish that it did matter a little bit more considering this is the whole point of the revenge well it, it uh, should matter because like i mean this dude is now like running this small town and shit and like everyone that was involved in this shit is like you know they're a big part of the town and shit like that too so they got somewhere with it you know an explanation would have been nice yeah. it would have been nice actually to explain that away for sure and plus you know when you explain things away in a revenge tale it does make a little bit more sense like you know instead of just okay he killed a bunch of people we're gonna go back for revenge like i mean anybody can write that and do that type of shit right but explanation here would have been nice but i from what i've read though i think that the um the flashback scene that happens in the middle of this movie what an hour into it is basically triggered from him grabbing this whiskey bottle and then he has this flashback yep. to like nom but it's civil war and um and it goes through and and i will say that whole scene is shot so well like it's got that real kind of warm atmospheric blue. kind of blue tone to it and shit it looks beautiful on the blu-ray man it looks really fucking good um but i think it's 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 actually out of order because i from what i've read is that that flashback scene was actually supposed to be at the beginning of the movie <laughs> you're supposed to get that in the first scene and then the movie plays out so yeah speaking of the flashback scene again um whenever the, the our lead gets shot um they put like some sort of filter over the the camera it looks like glass almost or ice and i was like is that supposed to be him dying because then i'm like okay so he is dead you know because right. i think that's the, I that's like, what, what they're trying to filter? give you yeah i think that's exactly what they're going for there because <clears throat> it does play it up a little bit more even though they do the flashback scene about an hour into the film and then in the next five minutes we kind of get a reveal or we get a we get something something happens that kind of proves that he's more likely human than a ghost. Right. So I think it would have made a lot more sense to have this flashback scene as your opening scene, because then it gives you more of to think about throughout the film until like the, I actually agree with you. I think that the flashback scene should have not been a flat flat flashback scene but it should have been like the opening of the movie yeah yeah, yeah. and it's nice. supposed to be and i always thought it was funny because the original italian version does have that but like i said though it, it makes perfect sense to have it there wait because... so the original italian version actually has that scene at the beginning right right the american versions are all edited in there's like the little one when it, there's a little bit in the beginning and then there we get that you know what 10 12 minute uh, flashback scene in the middle of the movie hour into it it's not supposed to be there so that makes sense yeah so it does kind of it gives it a little bit of a fuckery but yeah again you know if you saw that in the beginning of the movie you'd be looking at the movie You'll understand completely why different he was doing this yeah, yeah it, it makes a lot more sense and it does make you question if he is actually alive or dead considering how that scene plays out right yeah, yeah especially because it's like okay you show the scene and then two seconds later you're like no he's alive well, that's, <laughs> and, that, and, like, I, and, and, and i have this noted too i'm like it's just it's bad placement i don't know why they would do that maybe it's because of the scene where he does grab the bottle and he just kind of i don't you could edit that differently you could definitely could just edit that you don't have to like fade it out and then you know fade it back in kind of thing but otherwise it's, yeah it's funny when the dude finds the bottle he's like Hey, I found this bottle, and he's like, "Hey, why don't me and you have a couple of drinks?" And he's like, we're "Hey, like, no, we're supposed to give it to the <laughs> yeah." And he's like, "Oh, okay." <laughs> <laughs> right, right. You know, this movie opens up well. Besides that little flashback scene, but can you imagine playing a game of chicken with dynamite? 
Yeah. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. Like <laughs> fuck that. Like those but guys nobody died. I was disappointed. The, I was like, I wanted somebody to explode. Right, right. That actually would have been pretty awesome if some dude's arm went fucking flying I mean, off. I mean, wouldn't the tactic there t- to be just hold it until the wick's almost down and then throw it at the guy? <laughs> I think what they have to do is they have to throw it back and forth. Yeah. And I think that's what you have oh, to do, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah. But yeah, that's um, that's a crazy like, game. I bet you a hundred dollars. <laughs> like a hundred dollars back then is like a million dollars. Like Jesus Christ. Right. <laughs> it really is. Yeah, though, that man. reminded me of when I was a kid. My uncle found a snake in the shed, and he threw it at me. And I would run from it, and he'd go pick it up and keep throwing it up in the air at me, and it would land right in front of me and stuff. And it was horrifying. Yeah, it, it, it's weird too because there is a little bit of continuity errors in this film because uh, the movie takes place in 1881, which is in real time is 16 years after the Civil War ended. And I had to I had to look this Civil up. Civil War Just, ended in 1865. 1865, and I and I was positive, so I had to look this up because there's a scene in the end of the film where they actually sure. our our main character, our Murdoch character, says, "Oh yeah," he says something on the lines of, "You know, uh, I did something very poor. I made a bad decision 13 years ago." And I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, 13 years ago? I'm like, that was 1868, and like the war had been ended for three years. It was actually it was should have been 16 years, so they fucked up there. So I had to double check the date. I wasn't huh. sure if the yeah. Civil War ended in 67 or 65 or 66. I'm like, no, it is 65. So if it's 88 or 16 years later. His 13 years? Yeah. He's talking about 68. I'm like, that's fucked They're up. They're not yeah. American. You can't blame <laughs> right. I just, yeah, I just like, happened to catch it. I didn't hey, catch look, it the first American time I watched history, this movie. You couldn't just Wikipedia this shit back then. You right. know what I mean? <laughs> right, right. But I didn't catch it the first time I watched this movie. And then I caught it this time. I was like, did he just say 13 years? And I'm like, that doesn't, the math doesn't work out there. That's wrong. So, but anyways, it's very, it's very, very minor, but, um, but it, you know, it's got all the elements of what you want from a movie like this, a lot of one-liners and shit. And it's, it's, you know, it's not like hilarious one-liners. It's just, it's very spaghetti Western type one-liners yeah. that just kind of work. And I don't know. I just get a kick that he even looks like Clint Eastwood too. Like it's just, yeah, it's yeah. Italians ripping off other Italians and it's just funny. But, um, I will say though, this is definitely the best made movie um, that probably Grony ever did, to be honest. Yeah, for sure. You know, it's entertaining too. I mean, really, this one doesn't really have a lot of downtime considering, you know, it does have a little bit of slower moments and stuff, but I feel like it's always creeping towards something. It's always kind of has you thinking and shit, but yeah, it, it, it's, it's a fun movie, man. It's a fun movie. Did you guys watch this in like high def, like the, the synapse transfers of this? Is that what uh, was on the interwebs? So I started it with the version Jeremy gave me, and then I I didn't have it with me when I was watching it. So I watched it. It was actually on Tubi, <laughs> so oh. it's like 480p. <laughs> oh shitty man, because this thing looks yeah, it amazing. Wasn't, it, it, it was nowhere near as good didn't as. Didn't I send you this? It. Yeah, yeah, but I said that I no, I'm, I I'm wasn't saying around. Boots. I thought I sent him the Blu-ray of this, or I sent somebody the Blu-ray of it. Uh, no, I picked this one up a few years ago yeah. when I released it. But was this Blue, Blue Underground Synapse? Synapse. Synapse. Yeah, it's a, it's a really they do good. good they did a really good job with this one. It's really good. Yeah, I, I gotta admit, I don't think I've seen many spaghetti westerns. Um, I think maybe only like two or three, but yeah, I, I enjoyed this one. I thought it and was. You gotta a, see the good, the bad, and the ugly, man. That's a I know. I've classic. still never seen it. Yeah. I mean, I've seen so much of it from my pap watching it a hundred times. That yeah. I feel like I've seen the movie, but I've never actually sat down and watched the whole thing. It's definitely I saw good. The theaters during the pandemic was good. Yeah, they're definitely a good starting point, which is kind of what set the whole ball rolling with uh, with the, with that trilogy right there. But um, yeah, those are fantastic movies, man. There's just, I mean, so just, many just on a tech. <laughs> no, the, the three movies. Like you know what I'm saying? Insane. Like yeah. the three movies. But um, yeah, you can't go wrong with anything. Eastwood and Van Cleef, though, man. Oh yeah, you really can't. Uh, I'm I'm a big everybody knows I'm a big western fan I love western spaghetti westerns and shit so when you kind of combined you know minor horror elements with something I'm like oh yeah that's pretty cool I've always liked westerns myself too my, I mean my pap my whole life watched westerns all day long every day so yeah, yeah. I've seen a lot yeah I was, dance, uh... yeah I grew up watching Eastwood movies so much because my grandpa was the same way like his hero was like Eastwood and shit right so watched yeah. a lot yeah. And that motherfucker's still making movies. Still. Unreal. 
<laughs> directing and act. It's just ridiculous. Like the guy's like ninety years old and he's he still is going. 90. It's nuts. It's Fuck absolutely. Argento. What about Clint Eastwood? He's fucking ten years older. Man, I tell you, that's gonna be a sad day when he passes, man, because he's literally a living legend. Like, yeah, dude. It's just incredible what he's done in his career, man. It's just crazy. I doubt. But um You guys have anything else on the movie you guys want to talk about? I don't, Jeremy. No, I should be okay. For some reason, there was no lesbianism, and there's lesbianism in every one of these. I was going to ask you that when we get to the next movie. I'll we'll talk about it in the next movie. Yeah, no, this movie is pretty. It's pretty tame on the sleaze. In fact, I yeah. mean, consider. I mean, a lot of these movies. I guess they're hit and miss. They're hit and miss. It depends if you have the the whorehouses, or I guess to get political. Like, correct the brothels. The, the brothels or the bordel whatever you want to call them cat house yeah this one doesn't really focus on shit like that this one kind of focuses on what it's supposed to be doing but i enjoy this one but uh who yeah. wants to go first who wants to go first mm, jeremy. jeremy all right six and a half out of ten things are not going to change I'm still just going to give my rating six and a half out of ten that's well what yeah Dave does apparently do. that's the way to do it because if you if you say if you recap what you said it's wrong <laughs> like, he already said that he didn't bring anything new to the table you know you yeah, just repeated everything you were fucking saying man <laughs> uh yeah i actually was surprised that i enjoyed i don't i don't know why i was surprised but i just thought it like when it first started i i, I wasn't really into it but then i got into it um, I think I might not have just been in the mood, but yeah, I, I ended up really enjoying this. I think that it, it made me want to see more uh, spaghetti westerns, maybe a couple other Django films. I have a couple of them, actually. What's the is the one Arrow. on the 4K? Is that the original Django? Yeah, yeah, yeah. it has the sequel too on that edition. Yeah, okay, that's the yeah, original Franco Nero. Yeah. I have that 4K, so should probably check and, that and out. That's what, and that's what I love about Tarantino too, man. Like when Tarantino did his Django Unchained, mo- Unchained movie, he yeah. actually, Franco Nero's in that movie, right? He actually yeah. plays a decent yeah. role, which I thought was, I, you know, it's so it's so Tarantino to put Nero in, the, in a new Django movie, right? So I do yeah. love Tarantino, man. I, I mean, that's another guy that's like a living legend at this point. Such a great filmmaker. Um, but yeah, uh, I'm going to give it a seven. Yeah, I, pretty much the highest on this, man. I'm going to come in with a, with a reasonable eight. On this one, I think it's a great. It, it legitimately is a good Western film. So, but it could be so much better with that fucking just a little bit of blood and gore. I think would have been great. Um, I do like the end of the movie. <laughs> the quote when the when the the blonde haired chick says to Django, she's, she's like, she's like, let me go along with you. We can be rich forever. He looks at her and he's like, we won't live forever. You know, he's like, we won't live forever. And then just keeps going. I love that. <laughs> That's great. All right, so that is going to conclude uh, the first film from 1969, Django the Bastard. All right, so moving along into the second film from 1974, and it is called The Hand That Feeds the Dead, starring the one and only Klaus Kinski. The man. Yes. Yes. The insane Klaus Kinski himself, who starred in numerous, or as Jeremy numerous, says, Klaus Kaczynski. Kaczynski. Klaus Kaczynski, yeah. my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> numerous, numerous. Uh, I would tons and tons of Euro films, and this being one of them. All right. So synopsis: Under strong influence from his burn victim wife, a wealthy aristocrat does skin transplants from young women, who are captured, operated on against their will, and then killed. To fix his wife's burnt body. Huh, that sounds very familiar, huh? Can't put my I can't put my finger on it. Hmm. I think it's a French film from nineteen what year did this thing come out? Nineteen sixty. Hmm. It says eyes without a face, but much more boring. <laughs> it's you know, it's a pretty fair assessment, man. It is exactly what it is. It's a mad doctor film that is basically doing the exact same thing as eyes Eyes without a face just not as good (laughs) at all as dave would like to as dave said in the facebook chat coma inducing and i agree with him it it is very it's very spot on this movie is boring as shit oh my god oh my god like okay well we've all seen this storyline before in a much better film that we just named 
And, you know, you think if you're going to... It's also a Frankenstein story. It, it is a Frankenstein story. It's a take on Frankenstein, and it's, you know, it's a combination of Frankenstein slash, you know, Eyes Without a Face kind of thing. To a T. Essentially exactly yeah. what it is to a T. I mean, in, in a sense, this one has a little bit more... It has, like, a kind of... Uh, it's like a moral tale. Um, <laughs> kind of by the end of it, it's like, you can't really trust women, can you? <laughs> again but this is what I it's almost like a cautionary like, tale it makes me laugh like, that they put that in this, there but this movie's so boring what can we do to make it better i know lesbians let's just put a lesbian scene in the middle of the movie that has nothing to do with the plot it, yeah let's do that and that's exactly what they fucking did it, it really is it's because they didn't know what the fuck to they didn't know how to fill in the the plot fill in the narrative with some decent plot in this movie because let's face it man the subplot in this movie okay well we just basically told you what the movie's about. It's it's essentially, you know, this guy played by Klaus Kinski. He is a doctor, professor, professor N- Nijinsky, Ninsky or something like that. It doesn't really matter. But anyways, he worked for a, uh, a professor who was killed in, in an experiment and stuff like that. So he kind of takes over and shit. And he was mar- the professor Kinski is married to his professor's daughter. She gets burnt up in this accident and stuff. Yeah. And, you know, this movie has it all. He's got his own little henchman who he doesn't have a hump, though. Yeah, and he get him. he's affected by a dog whistle, pretty much. Yeah, he's <laughs> affected by a dog, which I don't understand that whole thing. It's still like... What happened to him then? No pun intended, but it's still thing. ringing. It, it's ringing in my, in my head, and I'm just like, what the fuck? I don't understand how that could affect you in that way. Like, you literally, yeah. you know, you do this dog whistle thing, and it's to the point where it's like incapacitating him to the point you're just I, I don't understand how that's really working it really doesn't make any sense but I was kind of disappointed that his that his uh, henchman didn't have a hump because that's a very 70 thing to do right <laughs> we talked about that in 1970 show every movie had a hump in it but but anyways so we've got this and you know all these women are going up going missing in the small town and shit and then this one girl shows up and you know she's looking for her sister and we got the subplot with the police and stuff that doesn't really go anywhere I mean it this shit like ends up in like lesbian sex and the whole subplot is the most boring shit ever in this movie. Like it Who's really, it, it, it doesn't move it along at all. Like the, the investigative part of this is so fucking lame and so boring that it's just tedious to watch. And it really doesn't go anywhere because what we get in the third act is just what we get. You know, it doesn't really have anything to do with these other people and shit. And, um, I, I, I honestly, can can it stinks. It's probably the worst movie we reviewed since the one that I picked, that massacre movie or whatever the hell it was called, that and Don it, and Nelly gave a nine. Oh, on, it uh, is, man. It, it is just yeah. it, it, the thing that pisses me off about this movie, like it, it 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 has no atmosphere. It actually I will say, okay, this caught me off guard because so I watched the full moon blue ray blu ray, which I will say looks pretty yeah, fucking it's good. good. Yeah, I watched good. the ass version. Oh, okay. See, so, I told you you should have like picked shit. up the blu ray. I did I pick it up, but I've I ended up watching it at work because I and I don't, didn't have a Blu-ray player, so I was like, "Guess I got to watch this." Stu-. So I bought this fucking Blu-ray. Didn't oh. even get to watch it. So you watched <laughs> this shitty movie with a shitty transfer. That must have been torture, man. It was pretty. I'm not gonna lie, dude. It was fucking extremely torturous. Oh man. Oh man. So like, <laughs> I'm watching. This I was watching a- it in a bright lit room, and I was just like, I can't see shit. I'm, I'm thinking to myself the whole time. I'm like, man, this movie looks really good, and I'm like, and I'm like. So I'm checking the audio options on this and it says the one I'm listening to is is the English audio, but it's, it's clearly the only one. But it's clearly like Italian or or Greek or whatever the hell they fucking dubbed this thing in. Yeah, I was about to say and, it's subtitled. Right. And then the, so there's two audio choices. So I flipped it to the next because I thought it was supposed to be in English, because it's Klaus Kinski, and they're clearly speaking English in the movie. You can yeah. see their mouth moving in English, but it's dubbed. And I'm like, so I flipped it over and I'm like, this one says English, but it's not English. I'm like, fuck it. So is it supposed to be, is there supposed to be an English track that Full Moon just didn't put on the Blu-ray or something? Or are they just label them both wrong? What the fuck is the deal? Because they're clearly. It's outside Charlie Band being Charlie Band. Yeah. It just annoyed me because you could clearly tell that they were speaking English. Like it was so infuriating. I'm like, oh, fuck, whatever, man. So that, that was starting to grit on me and shit like that. But. 
the best aspect of the entire movie is the skin transplant stuff and even that is kind of shoddily done like one time uh, he takes some of the skin off the leg and he peels it up and it's it's like skin, perfectly fine skin underneath. Yeah. It's not like blood yeah. and gore. And it fits it's perfectly, perfectly fine skin. Well, the yeah. only scene that looks decent is when he fucking takes the one chick's the face, face right off. Yeah. That, that was actually kind of nauseating to watch a little bit because I always like, I don't know, man, it, that kind of grits on me. It's like eye gouging and shit, man. When you're ripping someone's face off, I'm just like, Ugh, it's kind of uh, it's skin Skin... Like that's why skinless Julia is like one of my favorite effects ever. Yeah, uh, because it really gets under my skin. <laughs> yeah, no pun intended. <laughs> and um, uh, obviously, martyrs is another skinless right um, masterpiece. Um, but yes, yeah, so I, I do actually find the removal of skin to be um, very unnerving. Mm-hmm. So that that is I'm like that much when somebody's the brain, ab- when someone's brain thought. gets removed. That yeah, that's too. Jigsaw. That's the one I think of all the time. Yeah. 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 I mean, you know, those scenes are probably the, mo- the most interesting aspects of the film. But I like everything that's going Still on. Like, I, like I said, like most of this, like the subplot in this movie is just there's just so much of like nothing happening. Like I said, like what, what's with the investigative part of this movie? It goes fucking nowhere. I couldn't even like pay attention to like who were those girls there? Well, the one girl was there. the one girl was um, one of the girl's sister, sister that went missing. Yeah. So the, you know they had snatched up one of the girls, so she was there, and then they, the other she, one was like a reporter, right? Yeah, yeah. And then they, of course, have this like lesbian relate because you got to fill in the gap somewhere because there's nothing happening with the. Yeah, what's up with Italians and lesbians? I don't understand. It, it, like, what does every Italian it, movie have? Because to have you got stuff? instead it, of having one hot girl on screen, you have two. And that's the thing, yeah. right? But I it's mean, like, why does every Italian movie have to have lesbians just, in it? It's just gore. It, <laughs> it's probably the gore, producers just are just like, okay, well, you don't really have a lot going on in the subplot, so why don't we just bring these girls together and and, and make them fuck? You know, it's like, make it interesting. It's just a sleaze factor, I guess, but it really doesn't make a lot of sense, right? All, of, su- all of a sudden, they're just together and they're doing this lesbian act. I mean, it doesn't need to make sense if you're into watching women fuck each other i guess but it does come out of left field and like i said though the whole subplot is is really nauseating because there is moments where you know you you have these police involved and stuff and it seems like it's going to get into this type of thing but it really doesn't go anywhere (laughs) like what the fuck happens to the police investigation here (laughs) it doesn't even go anywhere it's ridiculous they they like call those army guys and that's like it (laughs) That exactly because the third act plays out like the way it plays out, which is you know it's not the worst thing in the world. It's definitely it goes into a place it, where at you least probably the did. movie gets more entertaining in the third act. Yeah, um, the, yeah, the, there is some kind of I would say almost it twists becomes and turns. More watchable, it does. It, it becomes a little bit more watchable because it, they really did abandon that subplot, and then it kind of gets into what it's the meat and potatoes of what's going on, and then it's got a little bit of twists and turns and shit, and it's like I said, it's kind of like a cautionary tale at the end. Of, and if you think of it like that, it, it kind of makes me laugh a little bit, to be honest. But it does, it's not a saving grace, though, man. It's not a saving grace. Two-thirds of this movie is really tragically boring. The music is pretty fucking bland in it. It's, it annoyed the shit out of me that I could see them speaking English. And I was reading this fucking terrible dialogued movie that didn't really make a whole lot of sense. Oh, Kinski, man. He did some really good Euro trash movies. And he did some fucking terrible ones, man. Like God said to Kane, man. Right? Jesus, yeah, that's a good one. That's a fucking good one. We're just talking about westerns and shit, but holy man, dude, shitty. It is, man. It it is really, really shitty, man. I think the biggest. So glad thing I picked this for one. Me is just that it's fucking boring, dude. It is like the 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 first like two acts are just a slog, man. It's a, it's a type of movie you want to watch on one point five. You know, it would have been a better story, like if they had instead of opening up the film where you know his wife is already burnt and the tragedy has already happened with the professor, um, whose whose name is Ivan Rashomon, like not like it's he's named. It made me laugh because there's an actor with the exact same name. It's the same fucking name as the actor Ivan Rashomon. So I'm like, and I'm like, is it played by him? And I'm like, no, it's not. That's actually the character's name. And he's like named after a real actor. I'm like, that's fucking confusing. That's Russian, right? Yeah. Um, I don't know if the Sounds guy's Russian, Russian but Russian. Nah, he plays no. a ton of fucking Italian films. I'll tell you that. But, but yeah, no, what makes this thing nauseating, like I said, is the, uh, is the just super brutally boring subplots and stuff. And I think if you had it done the movie a little bit differently, like, you know, maybe having 
some scenes with the actual professor and, and kind of stretching that out a little bit. And, you know, you kind of get into that, which would have taken away from this bullshit subplot. And so I don't know, just anything to save grace here because we spend way too much time with nothing. It's pretty brutal. It's Klaus it's Kinski. Serbian. Yeah. Serbian. The, the Klaus name. Kinski. Yeah. <laughs> Why can't it be like Crawl Space, man? Crawl Space is fucking great. Yeah, Crawl yeah Space I mean, and that's the thing, man. I mean, everyone's made their good and bad movies, but I mean, this one is just... It, it's and, and the thing that's, that bugs me, too, it's just... I mean, you don't have to be uber original to make a to fun movie and stuff like that, but this one, I would suggest just watching Eyes Without a Face or any of the Frankenstein yeah. movies. Well, you should watch Eyes Without a Face, that movie. Everybody should watch that movie. Yeah, no, it, it's truly a masterpiece. Yeah. And it's not just because it's French. It's it's actually just a g- great film. Really good. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I mean, boring. I, I hate using the adjective, but what? how else do you describe this movie? Like, like if we had got more from the, the main aspect of the movie. Of like the last one. You know. The thing is, too, it's like, even for 1974, this is not fucking original, bro. <laughs> like, no, you know what I mean? Like, like we've seen like six, seven movies that have been like the same type of thing before that. It just, it's just so, it's just like terrible writing. Like you're going to spend half the movie trying to figure out where these girls are disappearing, but then not even like continue along with that. It, it, it goes nowhere. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's just like a poor, it's totally horrendously written. It's such a terrible movie. Yeah. Why did you have to pick this one, Moods? Well, because it was part of Groni. <laughs> we haven't done Groni yet, and we're re- we were doing some math. We're actually running out of guys. <laughs> well, not me. I found a bunch of guys. Yeah, but that have three decent movies. Oh my god, Jeremy! I think the guy that you'd picked, I think it was going to be pretty bad too. Well, probably. But but no one's ever talked about that guy before, so. Yeah, I'll continue to keep picking the good people <laughs> with mine. We could do a couple of bad and a couple of good. Uh, yeah. All right. Well, I don't really have too much more. I don't really know what else to say about it. There's not really much to say. There really isn't. It. There's some. There's some cool surgical moments in this that don't look really the greatest. I mean, and that's well, even really their bu- skin. It looks like it, that skin looked like dead yeah, skin. Like when they do like off blood. of like an eighty year old woman. Right. When they do the close up of the face, it's like kind of looks shitty to be honest. How, how are you gonna make that skin look all smooth and sexy? <laughs> I gotta say, he's a pretty damn good surgeon because by the end of it, man, she looked pretty fucking good. There was no scars yeah, at all. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, and also like, oh, just. I mean, where it goes. Stupid. I mean, where it goes. The next movie, the next movie surgery thing is even more retarded than this, but. I mean, we'll get into that. <laughs> the, the end of the, the end of this movie probably is the best part because it's just like, Oh yeah. You know, you go do all that shit and then it's, you have the credits <laughs> 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 or him laying out in the yard. Uh, and me just going, thank God the credits, but yeah. Cautionary tale. If anyone's seen it, they're probably laughing at that. Cause it's kind of funny. Yeah. But ratings, it's bad. Yep. Uh, I guess I think I'm first. Yep. Um, I'm going to go ahead and give this puppy a four out of 10. I'm going to come in at a solid three. It is a, so boring, which we mentioned many, many times. I'm at a four, two. Jesus. Wow. You gave it a four. I'm surprised moods is below both of us. Oh, I was just, I was dying, man. I was dying with this one. You know it's bad if moods is right in an Italian place. I didn't. Though. I didn't enjoy. It. The only thing I enjoyed was just the transfer. pure and utter. Well, the transfer was really good, but the, I did pop yeah. it in. The pure and utter betrayal at the end was just ridiculously funny to me, and I was like, oh, "I'll give him props for that. That's pretty funny, <laughs> right?" So I know why they skipped this week, but there was nothing. Well, because he, he had just watched this. I bet you if he hadn't watched this movie recently, he probably would have done this. Yeah. But he knew what he was getting himself sure into on a route. He probably yeah. didn't need to rewatch it, man. I mean, come on. What, like, what, what? Like, what are you gonna get from it after a second? What are you gonna take from it after a second watch? Yeah, nothing. There's nothing, nothing to talk about. It's ridiculously bad and boring. So yeah, we could honestly watched it now. Waited a year to do this next year, and still, still probably it. have the same opinions <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> without ever rewatching it. Right. <laughs> 
Right, right. All right, so yeah, that is um, The Hand That Feeds the Dead from 1974. Experimenting with these. They are humans. Have you considered, Dr. Steiner? They are against the Third Reich. All right, getting into the third and final film tonight from 1976. And then, did anybody watch this for 76? I thought of that. I did. I've seen this. This is my third fucking time seeing this movie. <laughs> Crazy. All right, so, which is uh, SS Experiment Love Camp or just SS Experiment Camp. Uh, this movie is probably most famous for being on the banned video nasties. It is a video list. nasty. Yes, and it was eh, one of the more infamous ones because it's to do with Nazis. And usually the cannibal films and the Nazi ones got a lot of attention. Mm. And they were usually some of the worst ones. <laughs> so they became, I, I mean, honestly, without that attention, these things would probably never have gotten all the love dude, they've gotten over the years. But love. Speaking of which, though, man, I, I just don't, dude, like England was such little pusses. Yeah. You know what, man? Th this one was always, I always remember being like, Oh, I can't, I, I got to see that, you know, that SS experiment love can't move. I heard it's crazy and brutal and stuff. And like, it's actually quite tame. Ilsa is worse. Yeah. Like this one really doesn't, I mean, for a movie that's literally got the narrative of doing experiments on prisoners, you think it would be pretty nasty and sleazy and gory and shit. And like most it. of the sex is consensual. Well, yeah. that's the experiment for fuck's sake. It is all consensual. <laughs> Well, on top of that, well, except like, for the fact that they're prisoners, but how do you get your balls, your scrotum cut open? And then like the same day you're fucking a chick, like get the hell out of here. I don't care how good the heroin is. You ain't doing that shit. Yeah. Get out of here. All right. How the hell do you get your, oh, I... well, I, I, yeah, I, I think I this like is another the product. Would break open. <laughs> I think this is another product of a movie that really got way Sucks. too much attention because of the name of it and the, and the subject matter than actually what was within the movie. You know, it's like anything with cannibal. I think generally Nazi exploitation. Anytime you have a film to do with like Nazis, yeah, well, that's uh, is the main focus. D d the subject matter was enough just to get it banned. I mean, if you really look at the movie, and and obviously the poster art too, because it does have a girl hanging from a post upside down, all bloodied and shit like that. And you know, I mean, it kind is of in a, the movie, kind of an infinite, infamous uh, poster art and stuff. And I think that's what it is. You know, poster art content well banned. i mean you gotta think too uh world war ii had ended in uh 1945 this came out in 76 so it was only 30 years since the world was devastated i, I yeah. think people were still kind of saw like fucking pretty salty over the, the whole nazi thing right right um, i mean I, we, even to this day we still are but it, it's like i don't know if they because i mean essentially your hero is a nazi you're not your hero, but your lead. You know, your lead male yeah. is a yeah. fucking Nazi. Yeah. All right. So, quick little synopsis here. Near the end of World War II, prisoners of war are used in experiments to perfect the Aryan race. Yeah. You know, Moots, I got to say again, this movie fucking sucks. I, like I actually don't think I, it's that bad. I don't think this movie is actually that bad. I don't think it's it what it's supposed no to be. It's See, that's the thing with this movie is that like it it, sh it could have been a lot better and 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 more, you know, just um, what's the word I'm looking for? Because I mean, being as a video nasty that was actually one of the banned ones and stuff, like this one had a lot of high hopes for carnage and 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 all the bad sure. things that would make up like a band movie you know the to be put on the prosecuted list like it's crazy this one's pretty tame and even by and i'm not just saying because you know we've seen everything underneath the sun but i mean even 1976 or in the early 80s when the video nasty stuff was going on i mean th this is still by those terms i think pretty tame to be honest like i mean well, the subject you know matter is like not i mean basically th that synopsis kind of sums it up i mean they're doing experiments on these people because they want to you know just push forward the the white race they the want to make they want to make the perfect race but by but but the thing is with these experiments they're literally having like consensual sex and it's it's kind of like it's not horrific it's not like that overly sleazy i, I don't know man it, it's actually well, most of the most of the sex scenes are shot like love scenes they really are right i mean there's nothing horrific about i mean even the torture scenes that are happening with some of the characters and stuff aren't that bad they just like put a thing in their ear and they're like oh Guess. Right. I honestly, I think, I think one of the crazy, probably one of the more it's notable the, scenes, the hot cold. Yeah. Yeah. And, or the chick, you know, that's hanging from the post upside down and stuff. I mean, just that scenery, 
you know, is kind of mm-hmm. horrific and stuff. Well, that was but, put on the poster. That's probably what got it banned. Well, that's what I said before. <laughs> and But, like, I mean, overall, this movie, like I said, you know, I mean, even though these are prisoners of war and they're kind of forced to be having these sex, the women are still not, you know, they're not saying no <laughs> you know they're still objectively yeah, no, it doing it like they're still a obje- nice break for them <laughs> yeah they're still objectively doing this and like you said the scenes are kind of shot like all lovey-dovey and stuff and then and with that said there even becomes like this very odd kind of love story in this too with one of the main uh not, well that's what, that's the only plot of the whole fucking movie which well, seems well, you, completely here's unlikely. the thing you say there's no plot but it, i i've seen a handful of these experiment ss fucking nazi exploitation camp movies and uh this is probably has one of the more sto- most stories i've seen in any of them i mean yeah. at least it does it has like a general who obviously is um running this whole experiment camp but he's got an ulterior motive because he has a problem himself which is you know he can't fuck can yeah well, yeah he, the thing he's is, got he's is, got a dick this, problem the thing is that i found that was kind of interesting is the fact that like there's actually this big there's actually a long plot line with this where he's like encouraging this helmet dude to be in love with this girl because of what he's going to do in the end to steal his testicles or whatever mm-hmm. and <laughs> so he it's like this long con setup where he's like pushing him to be in love with this girl so then he could take strip her away from him to send him back to active duty or whatever so that he can which honestly doesn't make much sense it doesn't make any sense because you're a fucking nazi general you could take anybody's balls that's that's what i'm saying that like him you know him kind of promoting the relationship and stuff like that literally makes no sense in the narrative because he doesn't have to do that because you know he can just let him do what the fuck he's doing and then he still conned him into taking his balls anyways. And and that's the one thing about this movie. I never understood why Helmet doesn't. I I get that he doesn't want to question his superior because he wants to, you know, submit and, and help out the experiment and stuff. But wouldn't you be a little bit curious to what you what were getting you yourself do? into? Yeah. Right. So the, this whole plot line of, yeah, of, the, of like, this hey, general. What, what Where's my balls? my balls? <laughs> right. Like this whole gen. Yeah. Like, I mean, if you asked like what's going on and he tells you, like, obviously you're not going to submit or subject yourself to losing your fucking balls, but you're right. Like the, the you know, the whole, the whole general, <laughs> such a weird plot. Yeah, it, it just comes like, out of left field. Is going on it here. does, man. Because it, like you said, though, like one of the dumbest things about this movie is that this general is like encouraging this relationship, but it doesn't need to happen because he can do what he wants. He's a fucking Nazi yeah. dude. This he's is what they do. Nazi, but maybe dude. he didn't want, he could, he could have, he could have balls, as many so. Jewish balls as he wants, but, but uh, then he can't he Jewish Jewish I feel like this Jewish movie ball. has yeah. almost too much. Those are your balls. <laughs> it almost has like too much compassion though too because when you when you, when you get down to like the actual surgeon like you know, you know the older male doctor and stuff like this guy works for the nazis and shit like that but he has like this he, he's very he want to do he's it. a very sympathetic character because he keeps talking about you know i don't want to do these surgeries on these women because essentially what they want to do with these women they want to find the best uteruses and they want to take the best body and put this best uterus into that one creating <laughs> you know it, it's ridiculous surgeries ovaries. and he's come to the conclusion that basically it's a lost cause because you can't physically you know replace uteruses without them dying and he's very sympathetic in the in the in the matter of like he says over and over again he's like we can't do this we're taking too many lives we're taking too many lives and I'm thinking motherfucker you're killing millions and millions of fucking Jews out well, there like this is what you Nazis do they kill people any, any stories and stuff there were a lot of like doctors and shit like that that were, were forced like, to do corpse. what they were doing I, I know that they yeah. were, there was people because they had to take people that were qualified to do these things and then kind of make them do yeah. certain things I understand that for sure but you know I mean they do really push that matter of this doctor being very sympathetic towards these women and stuff and being like no man we can't do this shit because it's stupid to do it because they're gonna die we can't physically do this but with that said he fucking manages to remove a dude's scrotum and balls and fucking replace him on this dude like nothing happened can can you do that I thought that he just wanted to have four balls. I'm pretty <laughs> sure. I'm pretty sure that this is a non-existing thing. So he, I'm, so fuck, I'm not a medical so he doctor. Fuck even more, so he could fuck twice as much as what he was doing. So he has four balls instead of two balls. So my thing is like they kind of allude to the fact that like he can't fuck because he's like impotent, and I'm like thinking to myself, well, going, the chick bit his balls off. Yeah, but like, but balls aren't gonna make your fight. I mean, you can still get a fucking a hard on without yeah, balls. Yeah, people get vasectomies all the time, right? That's what well, I'm saying. You can still get a hard on and fuck without balls. So I'm like, you just what? can't procreate exactly because your balls carry your sperm. 
but I'm thinking to myself going, but they, they literally say that he's impotent. I'm like, well, why can't he? But I think it's because he needs maybe lack of testosterone. I don't know. Well, it's also because he wants the actual juices inside those balls to be a fucking mess. <laughs> this is getting gross. He really does. I mean, that's what it's all about. He could bang chicks with his non testy cock, but he wants, yeah, but he, he wants the end result. Sack too. Eh, I don't know. She they don't, they don't the show, too, they, they don't show them replacing the scrotum. It's just the fucking balls. And, and, and I will it's say true. though, the scene, I, I've watched this movie two probably three or four times now in my life. And every time I watch that scene, it, it's so cringe, man. Like, like almost in a good way because it's like making you cringe, but like when they're pulling the balls out and they're, they're yeah. snipping them out and I'm like, they oh, look it, real. It looks so fucking <laughs> they real. They probably man. are fucking real. They're it probably dog walks or something. Exceptionally real. Yeah. I mean, besides uh, the poster art and the content, it. I have to look away, dude. That must <laughs> be like the it. scene that got this movie banned because that shit looks way too realistic. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it really does. It, it's really hard, but um, obviously this You're was pussy, unintentional JP. funny. But towards like when when Helmet realizes what throw is, a pair of balls. What he's dude, what, what, like I can't stand this dude's name is Helmet. I know, it sounds like Michael Jackson named him. No, it's it's kind of funny that like you know his name is Helmet. Like you know, it's, sometimes you call your helmet. your mushroom or your head or your penis a helmet, right? It's just so funny that this guy ended up losing his balls and his name is Helmet. It's like, but there's I think one of the funniest moments in in an, any Nazi exploitation film ever is in this film, man. Is like. When Helmet confronts the general about his balls, and he's like, "What are you do with my balls?" And he fucking, <laughs> I fucking, I, I rewound it again because it it's, so, it, it's so funny. And he's like, the look on his face is just so. It's like he is expecting him to tell him, "Well, they're in my body they're now, right? right? Like I took your fucking balls. Like it's so ridiculous. It's so funny." But um, yeah, this one definitely plays out very odd. Like you don't expect to see a relationship between a Nazi and a prisoner of war, which is completely ridiculous in itself because I don't even know, like what kind of prisoners of war are they? Like, are they Jews? They never do state that they're, if they're Jews or not. And I'm thinking to myself, like they most likely would be Jews, right? Because that's what the Nazis did. I mean, if you know the history, if you know the history of what the Nazis were doing, what they were doing with the Jews is they were doing experiments on the Jews. And I mean, they could be from any of the fucking neighboring countries that they invaded, but they don't. And the retards and anybody else that. Yeah, they did, but they never do specifically say who these uh, prisoners of war are. So I I, I, maybe you're just supposed to assume they're they're Jews, even though none of the women look Jewish at all. It's kind of funny. Uh, But it doesn't really matter. You get this love relation or this kind of relationship thing go down and stuff. And one of my biggest complaints about the movie is it's honestly oddly entertaining. Weirdly enough, like I'm never really thoroughly bored in this movie. It's not like, it's not the greatest thing in the world, but I wish that the revolt was way longer than seven minutes. Like, are you fucking serious? Like we play up all this shit. Like helmet loses his balls and you know, he snatches up his girlfriend and they're revolting and they're killing off fucking Nazi officers and soldiers and shit that, and trying to get the fuck out of guy, there that bald headed guy has like 10 lives he just keeps coming back yeah i call him the iron cheek that's the iron <laughs> cheek character yeah um but yeah it's it's kind of a shame because once all the shit goes down with with our ballless uh protagonist ballless <laughs> wonder ballless wonder and the and the, <laughs> and the girl it's like seven minutes before all the carnage happen or all the carnage takes place in like seven eight minutes so i'm like fuck you know it's kind of a shame but yeah, yeah you know, I, I, too I quick. personally like Nazi the Nazi exploitation genre, and I, I like the the camp movies. Yeah, um, big fan of Ilsa. Um, Me too, man. Yeah, I've seen a handful of these. I mean, they're crud, they're crap. But yes, I kind of it, it's kind of I kind of like the crap. I think this year these are almost to the point where it's like I know most of us don't really have guilty pleasures because we like a lot of really shitty movies and stuff. But I think this kind of falls into that category if we were to state that we had guilty pleasures because yeah, I'm oddly entertained by these things too because they're so ridiculous. Like yeah, l- listen to what we just talked about. This one's balls probably removing. the most absurd. It really is. It <laughs> like, honestly has one of the most absurd Because the whole ball storyline is like so out of left field and you're like, this whole movie is literally about this guy trying to retrieve some balls. Yeah. it's He's just got, an, <laughs> he's got a different motive, right? He's supposed to be running this camp about, you know, but it's all about himself. This guy's super selfish. He just wants this dude's balls. I also feel like the actual story of like what the fuck they're doing is kind of directionless. It's like, okay, 
they're doing love experiments for the soldiers or are they just doing like tr- getting them laid so they can like I think I think it's more I mean since this guy's motive is at the end of the day is about you know himself and, and taking the balls and stuff I think it's just about keeping the soldiers happy because we have these prisoners we're doing tests on them anyways he already knows that this you know this uterus uh um, surgeries are not going that way and stuff so we'll just keep these guys happy keep them entertained for the time being until I get my new balls <laughs> right so yeah. pretty much what's going on man that scene where the girl is like all hot in the water and then frozen in the water mm-hmm. like <clears throat> it's kind of ridiculous because like it'll just it keep it, it just keeps cutting back to her with more ice on her <laughs> right <laughs> it's just funny. And, and it's clearly the shaving cream yeah <laughs> and like uh, honestly uh both of these movies this movie and the one before it a lot of people were supposed to be dead but that you could see them breathing oh dude like there there's literally one in the, i think it's the last movie where there's literally like a less than like a 0.5 second shot of the person dead and they're br- and you see a breath in that shot <laughs> i think i think it's in this one too one of the soldiers that gets killed you actually see him like blink he open he has his eye closed on the ground then he opens him up and blinks I'm like, oh, that's my favorite. That's yeah, they amazingly didn't, they bad. weren't really big into second the, shots. The, the finer <laughs> details of filmmaking. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, you know, when you're supposed to be dead, you don't fucking breathe <laughs> or blink. It's ridiculous. Oh, man. I don't know. I, I kind of figured that Jeremy, yeah, yeah, this is not your shit right there, but I don't know, man. No, it's not my, not my cup of tea, not just because it's Nazis. It's just not my, not what, my cup what, what, what about the opening? Like the when they bring the women in, it's just like, there's so much muff, like excessively amounts of muff and hairy armpits, man. Fucks with that. Oh. Yeah. There's a lot of hairy armpits, mm-hmm. but you know, when it comes down to it though, man, again, it being one of the more infamous video nasties and straight up banned. And it's not really that hardcore. It, it was could, unbanned. I believe in around 2005 ish for, for a movie that's literally, about fucking in the experiments not done that sleazy the kills aren't overly excessively brutal you know considering that's you know they're known for brutal killings and i mean there's a couple moments where you're just like yeah they kind of just start disposing of women and shit like that but i just wanted more of the last eight minutes because it was entertaining as shit you know like oh man iron chic and bullets are flying and and the end of the movie just kind of makes sense because are we are we really going to have this dude just like and this woman just fucking go off into the sunset? Probably not. Which would have been yeah. a which would have been a funny ending though. Yeah. <laughs> right? Just like they're holding hands and just walking away. Yeah, they're they're just on a they're boat. Like, they're like fuck all the other ladies. Let's just leave. <laughs> right. uh, uh. Yeah. So here, here, I want to read this real quick from the trivia. So this film was banned um, in 82 uh, during the video nasty craze. Mm-hmm. Uh, the British Board F- uh, Film Commission, I think it is, um, later passed the film completely uncut in 2005 with the following comment. The content of this film is, in fact, very mildly and poorly executed. If anything, it was the title of the film and its original packaging that led to difficulties yeah, rather artwork. than the yeah. content. Yeah. The di- idea of the film may, of course, be offensive to some, but that is not a good reason to cut or reject it. We would only cut or reject the film for adults if the content was illegal or harmful. SS Experiment Camp is neither illegal or harmful, just tasteless. <laughs> <laughs> it's not even tasteless. It, it, it's pretty uh, accurate, though, man. It's pretty accurate. I, I like this next one. Though. This is actually kind of funny. Early 2006 UK DVD release of the film on the Black Horse label mistakenly featured the film Love Camp from 1981 and included photographs of star Laura Gersmer. <laughs> <laughs> or on the back cover. So they picked the wrong one. <laughs> they put the wrong fucking movie on it. Because Love Camp's that a totally different movie. Ridiculous. Oh my dude, God. The, the, these fucking like the thing about the whole like video nasties and and even censoring and banning cinema in general, like it's either we we well, it's all allowed or US. nothing's allowed. You have to. You, there's there's no middle ground. Like obviously, I don't want illegal shit in the film. Like no child pornography. Yeah, right. yeah, but you can't you can't piss on people. Technically, huh? I swore there's like certain things that is considered obscene that you can't do in pornos. 
like piss on people. Yeah, but there's piss porn everywhere, though, man. I know. I'm not saying. Germany. I don't. I don't, I don't, th- I don't think I don't it's think technically illegal, illegal to piss on somebody. I think it's just a. Uh, it's just a personal uh, weird preference. I'll that pull it up. There's but a lot. There's a point, lot of water my, sports out there. Like my point is, is like well, this shit's you fiction. Reality, so. Oh god. That's illegal. <laughs> that's that technic- was, that's technically as it illegal. should be. Yeah. That was technically uh, the most legendary thing that Moods has ever oh, watched. Oh, that's so wrong. Uh, I, I think we matured from that. That period. was like 10 years ago. That was crazy. <laughs> oh, it was so bad. Um, yeah, I believe we actually just passed our Eight anniversary. Years. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, it, it's like you got to allow everything or you can't allow anything, like, in my opinion. Like, as long as it's not actually illegal, like, bestiality or... or uh, underage children or, or, or anything like that. That's illegal. The whole video nasty thing that is completely... That should be illegal, ab- but I don't know it, if it is either. It was pretty absurd, though, man, because, I mean, let's face it, a lot of these movies were being banned from titles and artwork and, and probably the opening scenes. There's no way that these censors and the people that were making these laws and, and banning these movies were watching the entire things because, let's face it, man, like the movie Cannibals, like, it's very, very tame, but it has a title called Cannibals, right? But, but even... Even the it's more of a drama. concept it's of more of a drama. obscenity being a bannable thing because of, of a scene yeah. is just stupid to me. Right. Well, censorship like, is, is censorship is let bullshit. People decide for themselves. Like it's like they think that humans cannot handle seeing something like that because it's going to somehow warp or morally corrupt them. Yeah, it's censorship. Dumb, just, it's people making it's decisions just the for dumbest you. Shit ever. Yeah. yeah, and that, that's why if, you, I hate if you're allowed to like, speak, like there's things called freedom of speech and stuff, and and these acts, like you're allowed to make movies and stuff, but then you have these people saying you're not allowed to put that in there because this may be harmful, or they think it may be harmful to other people, and it's like, what the fuck? You, it's called that's bullshit censorship. People should be able to make their own decisions, yes. right? You, if you, if you want to go rent fucking SS Experiment Love Camp and you don't like it, turn it off. You shouldn't have right. fucking Betty Joe telling you beforehand you can't watch this fucking movie because it has ball removal in it. It's bullshit. But it, it, it's very unfair. But, it, you know, you know, the Video Nasties era was bullshit. And I don't agree with censorship whatsoever. But I will say the best thing that come out of the Video Nasty era was the fact that a lot of these movies did get a lot of publicity and got a lot of good releases later on because they became infamous for being part of that whole, I want to call a scandal. Because it was bullshit. Well, the Video Nasties era, if anything, in hindsight, is intriguing and fun to talk about and fun yeah. to like look into. Yeah. So on one hand, like now, it's cool. Like you got the documentaries well, and stuff like that. So it's it's neat. Okay. So this movie right here, SS Experiment Love Camp, do you think that we'd be talking about it right now if it wasn't part of that Video Nasties ban list? Probably not. I bet you this movie would have I mean, maybe went... if you pick Groni, we might. But Well, it probably <laughs> would have went into obscurity. And, and and just died in VHS in the VHS realm, right? It would have never got its DVD releases and bullshit. Pulled- like, there's still tons of movies out there that are in those obscurities that probably would have been completely enlightened from being part of the video nasty scandal. Yeah, there's more of these camp movies that have never been released yeah. and stuff. So. It, it You know, a lot of, like, bad publicity is the best publicity, man. People like us eat that shit up. I mean, honestly, dude. Well, especially when it's the kind of publicity that says, you can't have this. And it's like, I've made points. I've made points like, you know, way back in the day, video now is shit. You you wanted to see every movie on that, on that fucking 39 ban list. Then you wanted to see all the other ones that were on the, on the section two list. And then it became the third list, you know? And so I wanted to watch all fucking, you know, 78 or whatever the fuck is on that list. And because they're on a list, you got to see this shit, right? Thank you yeah. for bringing that to my attention. I mean, I've, I've definitely not seen anywhere near all the video nasties. Um, I've seen a handful of them. I'm pretty close um, to but, owning all of them. So almost every, even on the section three list, well, there's still a funny, few if movies. If you go back 10 years ago, there were so many of these not released. And Act- it's like every year that goes by, there's more and Severin more. Severin just announced the weird delirium film. That was one of the last three um, from the uh, the section, I think it's section two list, because all the thirty nine films from the ban list have been released that have nice releases. But I think Delirium is one of them. They just announced that, so that one's coming out now. That's fucking crazy. It's I a, saw also it's a weird that movie. Um, is it Severn that's releasing House on the Edge of the Park? Yeah, re releasing it. Yeah, because yeah. Scorpion yeah. did it. 
Yeah. Right. I, I have the Blu-ray from Scorpion, but yeah, so the, I'm the, curious to see if it's like better. Yeah, I don't that's know. That's one of my favorites of the visit video nasty. It's not Scorpion. Well, it's I think it might have been actually it's Code, Code Red. Red. Yeah, Code Red. Um, yeah, you're right. Code but Red. yeah, they they were the uh, Scorpion had put out uh, uh, "Don't Go in the House" and Severin's re-releasing that too. Mm. So, but we're getting that Delirium movie, which is fantastic. Somebody's releasing one uh, Cannibal Man too, right? That's another one that's coming up. Uh, Blu-ray Cannibal Man. Yeah, Cannibal Man. Uh, it just got released. Severin? It got is that released. fucking Severin too? <laughs> yeah, no, they just released it. They already released Cannibal Man. Oh, okay. Yeah, because yeah. they did. They had the monthly package by the director, and they put out uh, what five of his films, I think. Yeah, Ooh. so pretty cool. And that's actually what I meant to say. I didn't mean to say Cannibals, but Cannibal Man is the film I was talking about earlier. It's more like wow, it, the it, witch it, it who kind of came plays from out. the sea was p- part of the second list. That's such a weird one to put on there. It is. It is. And I'm again that movie right there is probably a victim of its artwork. Its original artwork has the the um, decapitated head being held up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's definitely some movies that you're like, oh, I can see why that's there. And then there's ones where you're like, what? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there's definitely movies. And there's lots of movies from that era that never got seen by the censors that probably could have been on there too. <laughs> right? Like, yeah. So, different names. Such an interesting concept with the video nasties. It's, it's just neat mm-hmm. to see like all the films that were on there. All right, so we might as well get into ratings here. I guess I'm up oh, yeah. first. <laughs> um, yeah, so SS Experiment Camp or Love Camp. Um, not a great movie, but oddly entertaining. I am going to give this one a pass at a 5 out of 10. I mean, it literally has the funniest moment of all three movies in this. Like, <laughs> <laughs> So I got to give it a little bit of points for that. So, yeah, you know, seen worse. I've definitely seen, I saw worse in this show. Oh, that's for sure. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah, I guess. So, five out of ten. Jeremy? I'm at a, same as the last one, four out of ten. I thought it was boring, not boring, but not my cup of tea, for mm-hmm. sure. Uh, I am probably the highest on this one. Um, I gave it a six out of ten. Shit. Crazy stuff. All right. Well, you know what? I think it's interesting though that we, for the like third week in the row, like we all more or less agree with everybody's opinions on it, <laughs> on like all three of the films, right? Like yeah. the ratings might be slightly different, but we've been really close with every each other's opinions. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Funny. All right. Well. Okay. So that's gonna wrap up Sergio Caroni they'll definitely not be a part two <laughs> thank god yeah thank I don't god. even think he I don't even think he has enough movies even to make a part well in this realm of horror western and exploitation yeah this is just a fucking mixed bag of shit but uh so yeah next week we have Mario Bava yes Mario, Mario Bava's next week so you yeah, know we're looking forward to doing that and yeah, again, that's going to conclude Garoni. You guys that's have we done already. Look at that. I know. This month always rips by. It always rips by. Yeah. Have you guys been Jeremy, watching? when are you back? I'll be back at the end of November. So the show that's posting the first week of December. Which is the Universe Spirit Factory Universal show. Yeah, Universal Horror. Should be cool. All right sweet all right um guys have anything else or we should just get out of here no that's it man all right man well that is going to conclude i guess jeremy you can do your famous uh oh sand and your uh, get the sand sucked (laughs) out of your vagina oh yeah thank you everybody for listening to episode 215 of the 22 shots of moods and horror podcast i want to thank everybody for the nice comments all over the facebook page and in the comments on all the past episodes to people saying that they miss me. So fuck you, JP and moods. I am part of the crowd. And I especially want to say fuck you to Tony Hartman because he posted on the Facebook page a couple weeks ago and he posted about the last broadcast and he did not tag me in the fucking comment. So, uh, (laughs) fuck you, Tony Hartman. Anyway, 
If you want to follow the man Moods himself, you could do so at youtube.com slash moods 616. If you want to follow Taylor Swift's number one fan, you could do so at youtube.com slash double shot J. Follow me on my channel at youtube.com slash NES Ruler. 22 but of course it's been four years since i've posted anything so as you can leave us a voicemail at 724-426-6665 and you can follow us on twitter twitter.com slash 22 shots podcast join us on the facebook page facebook.com search bar 22 shots of moods and or podcast and of course my vagina is still very 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 sandy you can support it at patreon.com slash 22 shots podcast all right I should give JP credit, though. I am going to give JP some credit. For the first time in history, JP completed a 31 Days of Horror. So good job, JP. Let's give you a round of applause. Yeah, he only he only it. fucked up a couple times where he got him up late. So yeah, it would have been so, technically uh, the next day, but I'll still give him right. credit because they were relatively in the time frame. The one time, like, I always look at it like, hey, it's in the West Coast. It's not midnight yet. But there was one where I didn't upload it until like 5 a.m. the next day, but it wasn't my fault. Well, it was my fault, but I uploaded it. Like, you look at the upload time. I uploaded it at like midnight, but I literally forgot to take it off private. So I didn't I've done that before too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause YouTube, I don't know if, how your settings are, but it automatically goes on private for me and oh. I have to change it to public. No, I just, so, uh, that's why I just schedule everything now. I'll upload and yeah, then I well, schedule. I, so I it comes scheduled out. a lot of them. Uh, I had done, I had had 15 done before October hit. So that's why I was able to, I almost, I, I did struggle a little bit cause, uh, I started watching the 1970 movies and, uh, I basically by the 15th day I was like, actually had to watch one each day but uh yeah hmm. that was uh my second year in a row completing it so i think i might retire and go off in a high note all right you should do that <laughs> all right deuces bye all right okay that's it where you guys i'm going home <laughs>